This podcast features adults using adult language. You have been warned. This is an Acquisitions Inc. adventure leading up to the big adventure live at PAX West. <gasps> yes. So you guys are sort of scattered all over the place at the start. So I'm going to try to bring everybody together very quickly so we can just get into it. <laughs> That's what you do, Chris. You bring That's people what I together. Do. I do, I do. Because uh, last time we met live, it was revealed that Jim Dark Magic was suffering from a rotting curse that he was beginning to waste away. And after consulting with the eye of the All Father, an oracle in the spine of the world mountains, uh, you learned that this curse was brought on by something or possibly someone called the Soulmonger, that it was essentially sucking Jim. the life out of anybody who had been raised from the dead. Oh. Right. Uh, and so quickly in your airship, uh, you left the frozen mountains of the north and began to float southward. At some point, Omen, you decided that given the gravity of this mission, that Cathris and Morgane were simply didn't have, have the correct skill sets that you needed um, on board the ship. And so you did some resource alloc reallocation. Right. Right, 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 right. I, had, I, I made a deposit, uh, in this yes. case, of human people uh, onto yes. the ground. Yes. You, you also had, you've also been starting up these sort of smaller teams scattered throughout the north. And there was a, a team in the Deseran Valley uh, that was basically short a hand. And so <laughs> that's where, that's where Cathris got dumped. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just right in the alley. Just yep. deposit him right there, and not don't even really land the airship all the way. <laughs> Just get close, because we got a, we got places to go. Yeah, I was gonna say, do right. you even slow down in a case like that? No, <laughs> I don't think mm -mm. so. Mm -mm. Yeah, and uh, you probably dropped more gain off in nearby Waterdeep. Uh, gathered up some uh, other crew members, of which you'll need at least uh, four lay people or mooks to do the the basic necessities of flying this craft. Is that racist? So, mook. It's it sounds you know I, I, I looked it I looked it up. I really investigated Mook because it's a great derogatory and I try to be careful. I was not able to pin it on an ethnicity. It sounds racist, but I don't think it is. That's fantastic. Digital high yeah. five. <laughs> uh, so Jerry, um, you'll want to come up with uh, four crew members uh, to basically be uh, not fodder, but let's say background uh, characters for this. Yeah, for this adventure. Episode. Yeah. So, so this is basically this will basically be out of the water deep office. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. What's left of it? There. Um, <clears throat> yeah. It's. I mean, it's pretty thin right now. It's pretty thin on the ground. I mean, we tried to sort yeah. of reestablish it, but there was a bad things happened there. Long story short, mm -hmm. there was some yes. liquid. There was some liquefaction. Not, not complete liquefaction. There was the occasional bone. Right, and that's you realize nice. you realize it's that's different than liquidation, right? <laughs> if you if you if you liquidize if if you if you go for liquidity, it's not through liquefaction. <laughs> are you are you sure? Potato, potato. <laughs> yeah. Um. So let's see. So the people I'll scoop up is going to be whoever is out front right now, uh, immediately out front. Um, I'm just going to drop some ropes down, and yep. I'm going to look over the edge of the airship and I'm just going to start clapping and then <laughs> and like making sort of like a thumbs up like up into the air gesture that you know it would imply to the casual observer even the most casual observer that they should get the fuck on this boat um if they want to retain their you know gainful employment and I say gainful um in a euphemistic fashion right yes <laughs> um, let's see I uh, just Yes. Just to, to, to clarify, am I with the crew or am I yet to be picked up? Uh, I'm going to say that uh, you are, having gone off on some of your own side quests and adventures, as Vihari is prone to do, okay. uh, that, that you are here and okay. uh, are among this rabble. It's a, okay. a situation where he is, he is like engaged in some kind of, you know, espionage type chicanery. And then a <laughs> rope just sort of drops out. 
He's like in an alley, back to the wall. A rope just drops down in the middle of it. And it's like he's listening to this conversation, and then he's still sort of trying to get as much of it as he can as he's whisked away. Um, yes, yeah, let's see. Yes. So, we, so we, need, we need four people. Let me, let me uh, grab my notepaper okay. here. So uh, the first... You probably get at least, uh, you know, a dozen trying to climb the ropes, but ultimately... No, you and, well, and the whole time, as they're climbing up, it's sort of like a Donkey Kong Jr. type thing where they're all <laughs> sort of like shimmying up this thing. And it's like, no, just four, 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 just only four. over the edge. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, I will say Hibner is good on the ropes. Yeah. You know, he is, uh, he's, he's a little, he's a little teefy, right? So a little unruly, but he gets the job done. He doesn't sleep okay, much. I think that teefy is racist. I think that you've actually, <laughs> I think that you have actually brought this around. Pat. Uh, teefy um, here. is pretty bad. Yeah. Here, but here, okay. so, so, so far we've got Tweed Barsom and tweed? I, I'm, we're going to, we're going to get Hibner and, but no last name. We're just gonna okay. say that we're just Hibner. gonna say that Hibner is it. Tweed Barsum is a gnome. Uh, Hibner is a, a tiefling. I think is the um, I, no no it, it, hell's adjacent. I think is the the, 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 the phenotype. A uh, Hibner and then um, Ilandria. 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 Let's see. Ilandria. Primp. Okay. A sort of uh, acolyte, early days of wizard training. Mm -hmm. um, uh, does anybody have a suggestion for number four? What do you What do you got there, Strix? How about a gnome? Oh yeah, let's let's oh. double up. Let's double up on gnomes. <laughs> I'm with it. Yeah, they're small. Yeah, you know, exactly. They've got tiny hands. You can mm -hmm, stack them mm -hmm. on top of each other, and they can wear one big coat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. No one will expect it here. So uh, maybe like. Maybe like a forest gnome, like a really scruffy one. I like that. Oh yeah, yeah. Like 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 rough hands. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Elandria is uh, elven wizard, and then this forest gnome, um, <laughs> Scubby. Yeah, yeah. Scubby. <laughs> Scubby. It, it it wasn't originally his name, but you know, in the break room, you're like Scubby, bring me, you know, and it, Scubby, it caught on. Scubby horn swallow. There we go. Perfect. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Scubby had a different career. Yeah. <laughs> there was a radical. It took me several seconds to get the joke. Um, it's early, um, but I I can tell already that you're going to fit in great. <laughs> so when you said you needed lay people to man the ship, you were like, <laughs> how long have you been sitting on that one? Wow, uh, about five minutes, honestly. <laughs> lay persons. All right. Yes, lay, lay folk. Yeah. All right. So Tweed, Hibner, Ilandria, and, Primp, and, 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 and Scrubby uh, Horn and Scubby. Oh, Scubby, oh, not Scrubby. Scrubby. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Scrubby implies that he'd be really productive, <laughs> and he's not. Uh, yes. So, uh, Viari, something that, um, as, as the rope swings down and you use your daring do to get out of whatever ever scrape you found yourself in that moment... Uh, you too have uh, felt the sting of this death curse. Oh, because of my my demon arm. Yeah, because of your your um, your brush with annihilation. Um, but was, you you haven't actually, or have you died? Technically, I have um, not died. You have not died. Yes, uh, I, but you can sense that there is something wrong because of what this apocalypse dagger had done to you. And when you see Jim for the first time in what could be weeks or months, he does not look well. No, well. these are not the sores that you typically see on Jim. <laughs> but he's trying to cover it with a lot of powder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> and sunglasses and a wig. Some of the powder is on his uh, on, the on the shoulders yeah. of his robe and cape. Yeah, yeah he's constantly <laughs> brushing brushing his shoulders, but not like in a threatening way, like just because they're so coated um, with, you know, disease yeah. and powder. But the only wig he could find is like curly hair. So it's, it's still black, but it's just this luxurious <laughs> curly black hair. <laughs> Does he think that he is making it work? He's, oh yeah, he looks super confident with it. He's, he's strutting around. Like nothing is wrong. <laughs> you know, and, and the truth is, I could see this kicking off a fashion trend 
in the same way that people would put like pox, yeah. like have fake pock marks back in the day. So suddenly it's like too much powder and open sores <laughs> is the fashion mm-hmm. of the day. <laughs> and, you know, and what's funny is I was down there and I'm like, what the fuck is going on with these people? Why I'm at fancy parties? Everybody has open. And I get up on, and I'm like, oh. Okay. Yeah. Trendsetter. Yeah. Okay. Trendsetter. Yeah. Jim is the trendsetter. It's a new wave through Waterdeep. It's a reflection of the moral decay. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> like it really is a fundamental uh, statement, really, about what is what's going yeah. on, both within and without. <laughs> uh, now, to flesh out the group, Omen, uh, one of the things that you've done over the past several years is basically buy up. You know how companies buy up old medical debt. From people? Oh, sure. Or like bundled uh, mortgages, that type of thing? Exactly. Bundled. You've essentially been scooping up stuff like that. And among the things that you bought for super cheap, I think this might have cost you like 10 gold pieces or something, wow. was an uh, old infernal contract signed between the Lords of the Nine Hells and a family called the Skizixes. <laughs> and yeah, do, uh, I know, do I know? Have I heard about the Skizixes? Well, you you always do your research before buying anything. Yeah, and what yeah, you're yeah. Able, what you're able to ascertain was that this was a uh, human family based in Sigil. Oh, who extra planar. Essentially, uh, yes, extra planar humans who, uh, fearing annihilation by their rivals, forged a pact with the Nine Hells and Asmodeus himself and oh. were transformed into tieflings. Oh, oh, as a direct result. Yes. So this isn't and the via family, lineage. This is a curse yeah, that they took yeah. on. This is a this is something that they took on, and it basically tainted them or transformed them forever. And in addition to turning into tieflings, they were also awarded vassals to serve the family of the devilish persuasion. So devils were basically brought into the family to serve as bodyguards, advisors, assistants, and that kind Wild. of thing. Wild. It's like a it's like a a lower planar sort of mafia type thing. Yep. Wow. And like uh, good they buy. were. It's a good buy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and so uh, this contract basically allows you to um, call forth their the family's greatest uh, member and bind that individual to service. Now, Strix, why are you covering your face and laughing? <laughs> like, are you connected with this in some way or? <laughs> I'm not positive, but I have a feeling it might be. Oh, we're getting introduced say. here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just, I just have a feeling. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. So and this, in, this, this individual, this representative of this uh, infernal house is bound to do as you command. Yeah. It's a little, it was obviously very inexpensive. Yes. And it's a little weird. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, basically on the um, on the aft deck, like I, so I, I can summon them with this contract. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So basically, I, when I summon them, I mean, I want to make sure they understand that we're like up super high, and that like not jumping <laughs> out or or trying to escape this in some way is fine. Mm-hmm. Um. So <clears throat> I, I should be able to do this. I, I was, I was going to tell Jim. I don't want Jim to be like right there. But I'd like, Jim, I'd like you to maybe, like, hide behind a box and, like, look over here. Okay. Uh, just in case this goes south. Uh, I just hack up a ton of green mucus. <laughs> <laughs> I, say, I say, is that a, is that a yes? Is I that fixed, your new yes? I fix my hair and I nod. Yeah, yeah, I got that. I got this. Do you have it? I got you. Okay. Uh, so I, I turn back basically sort of, like, behind the helm. Yep. Um, and right there on that uh, aft deck... Uh, I'm going to read uh, the arcane symbols that will bring forth this new employee. Just just out of curiosity, is this like a pentacle? Is there blood being <laughs> splattered? I'm just curious what's happening on, on deck here. Yeah, so yeah. when he starts to yeah. utter the infernal invocation, the uh, deck, uh, appearing on the deck in flames is a pentagram. And it sort of burns itself into the, the deck boards, mm. uh, turning into this sort of smoldery soot pentagram. And as the smoke and soot rise up, they coalesce into a form. And this form kind of surprises you in a way because you were expecting some sort of, uh, you know, 
hell-armored tiefling champion or a gigantic horned devil bound to your service. Uh, but what appears instead is this sort of dusty black heap with like moths circling around it, uh, clutching in this uh, scaly hand a black staff with a crescent at the top. Her hair fraught um, and sort of sticking out in all directions. A witch hat uh, to cap it all off. Floppy. Yeah. Uh, archety and, archetypal. Yes. And she's in her other hand, she seems to be clutching a battered old broom. Oh, man. It's a dual wielding. Uh, yep. Jim, Jim and a, a smell up, rises up high. above the brimstone, a, a, a sort of a, a stale, wretched smell like spoiled food. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right from the old tables? Right from the classic tables? Oh, <laughs> I could not be more pleased. <laughs> so, so she's just in this heap on the ground. I say, do I get the moths? Do the moths come with? <laughs> are the moths, are they friends of yours? Are these like... There's some moths and a snail, too. There's one more snail in her hat, which she hasn't eaten yet. So <laughs> it's just in case. Oh, this is, this is some... But, uh, okay. I, I, she's also so, crying. Yeah. Yeah, oh, like, she's. <laughs> she's also crying. Well, I don't know how to deal with that. <laughs> you know, actually, <laughs> this Viari... got weird. This got weird so fast. I say, I say, Viari, uh, that's the new employee. Uh, go ahead and run the orientation, and then I join. I join Jim behind the boxes. Like I don't know how to handle that at all. Um. So yeah, I'll hit that cold, and I'm like, I really don't know why this person just got summoned. I Do don't it. know what the achieve, but I'll, I'll I'll just go up, and it's like. You might as well be at the king's court. It's like I come up and I'll just offer my hand and I'll say, hello there. You know, uh, please welcome aboard. Uh, what did we nickname this place? The Pentacle? What, what, where are we? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're just, just right back up on the uh, deck, the back deck of the airship. Yes. It, it, so, so Strix, you find yourself on the back deck of this airship, obviously very, very high in the air, the wind blowing things around, threatening to rip your witch hat off. This dashing figure with hair the color of fire uh, walks over to you, uh, lends you a hand, uh, and so she's got her head like like laying in the. She hasn't like looked up yet, so yes. she's just got her head on the ground. As soon as she hears the voice that's not who she was obviously arguing with, which was probably Evelyn, she was like, "No, I don't want it." And she's like, ah! and "She just starts screaming, <laughs> like scream, and she just backs up, like doesn't is it going to touch it? Like no touching, just like even though you're like trying to be super." noble about it. she's like no 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 nope yeah. as you back up you kind of bump into something sharp and pointy that causes you to <laughs> shriek and turn again and it's the aft crossbow mechanism mounted oh. to the deck rail you're just gonna so it, I can you're gonna be like a pinball you're just gonna bounce from <laughs> pointy thing to pointy thing and there's plenty of them up here dude is that what yes. you meant to summon it, listen i i got this i got this contract I saved a lot of money on this contract. <laughs> like, no matter what came through here, we're we're ahead of the game monetarily. That's what you need to think about, and it's not your fucking job anyway. You cover your own problems. Your shit's falling off. You just you deal with you for right now. Can Strix see that his shit's falling off? Uh, in, you can see an argument transpiring behind a box lower down okay. on the deck uh, between okay. between an in, uh, a couple individuals, one of whom. Uh, there is obviously something wrong with his appearance, but you can't quite put your finger on it. Uh, you can see overhead a gigantic balloon with what appears to be some sort of logo on its sides, which you can't quite make out. A black right. logo on a big red balloon over your head. And do I do I feel any sort of arcane like binding? Like, do I have a feeling? Make an like, arcana you know check for me. All right. Let's see how smart I am today. Oh, I'm pretty smart. Awesome. Twenty two. You do feel like a spell has been cast on you, but you don't know what its power is. It, right. Other than it, it seems to be some sort of uh, powerful binding spell. Like you don't feel like you could leave this place if you wanted to. All right. As she feels that, she's like looking over the edge, just about to like ah! jump on her broom. <laughs> and as soon as she feels, she's like, <laughs> just puts it back down. Uh, as soon as All Jim right. sees her with the broom, I walk over. I say, no. I like brooms too. <laughs> <laughs> she'll, she'll look you over and think that you're 
maybe a tiefling because you're so gross. <laughs> <laughs> and just be like, oh, hi, yeah. nice you to meet you. See, you can see he seems to have some sort of version, some sort of form of leprosy. Uh, and oh. his, on his, when, he, when you sort of stretch out <laughs> your hand, you can see, yeah, his hand is sort of covered with. Oh. It's not contagious. Sores. It's like, what, what, what happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm in the prime of my life. USDA mm. choice. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't, uh, all right. She like wipes her hand on her dirty Yeah, exactly. Bro, like, I, st mm. I stand I stand up from behind there, but like in an, from behind the box, but like in an industrious way. Like I was just like uh, l like belaying something or inventory. Yeah, or tightening yeah. something. It's just, and I, I give the box a couple quick pats on the top. Yes, that that seems to be in order. Uh, hello, I'm uh, <laughs> excellent, excellent. I run a tight ship. Uh, uh, I am Omen Drawn, and I am the owner uh, of your contract. Can I do an insight check to see if he's bullshitting? Uh, sure. <laughs> to see if he's being, if he's acting more important than. Yep. Oh wow, I got a uh, nineteen. That's not bad. You you discover two things. Um, okay. <laughs> The man speaking to you now uh, carries with him uh, an air of authenticity. Okay. You also know that this the fellow standing beside him, the one who seems to be infected, uh, has, uh, as, you, as you sort of can't really quite take your eyes off him, that what he seems to be suffering from is very reminiscent of what your friends were suffering from. Right. That they were kind of beginning to decay and rot in the same way. Or for, uh, right. not your friend, your friend, D.F., Right. Um, and, and actually you, before you were, you know, cured. Right. What? Uh, but I don't know any of that. No. No. So, yeah. Uh, nice to meet you. First, she'll shake your hand. Yeah, yeah. It's oh. probably still covered in, like, scabs from shaking Jim's hand. But Yeah, it's just, like, <laughs> act cells actively snowing down from the palm. <laughs> Those are just uh, <laughs> sores from where I work out, so don't worry about it. Just, I was lifting. <laughs> and, I was uh, lifting earlier. So you say that like she kind of can't take her eyes. Is there like, I mean, is this is is there kind of like a love connection happening here? Is this <laughs> is this like a a, a teefy like imprinting thing? That I, do I know about their their mating rituals? Jim has a powerful effect on creatures yeah, of the I, have opposite I seen, sex. Have I seen this before? Okay. Even in his rotting, decayed state, the only thing yeah, I is some kind of ray masculinity. <laughs> Strix's only true love are the snacks that she hides in her robes. Yeah. <laughs> do I think That's she's a, a wizard of some kind? Like, do I get a read for what kind of spell caster uh, she might be? Yeah, as you uh, make a perception check to kind of look her up and down, or insight if you prefer. <laughs> I rolled a one. I am. Uh, <laughs> I know magic. I'm, she says. Yeah, I'm hypnotized by her. She's some sort of dumpster witch. <laughs> Fire. Is that like a fire wizard? Witch. <laughs> kind of. It's more of like a mall goth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Tra we need to establish trash wizard as a cl as a class. All right. Yeah. Dumpster trash witch, witch technically. Yeah. Yeah. So far farther down in the social hierarchy than hedge witch. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. But uh, the, but you can tell Jim that the broom she's carrying does. You you think it's like like yours, magical in nature and possibly is able to carry her through the air. Oh, okay. You don't want to leave. Trust me. There's, you know, hang out, meet the crew. We got a good thing going on here. You're going to like it. I don't really know why I'm here. You summoned me? Join the club. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have, by this point, I have rolled up the uh, contract and I've put it in the back. I say, it's entirely possible you didn't know so I'll, I'll tell you what I purchased, and you tell me if that tracks with your own understanding. Your f family is in league with devils. Is that does that sound close? Am I close? Look, I've had a lot of run-ins with my family, and none of them have been good. So I am guessing that yes, the answer is yes. You you need to understand at root that I was able to purchase a contract that allows me more or less absolute control over where you go for ten gold. <laughs> uh, ten? You didn't even like, like not even like ten gold. Did you haggle with them? Well, I, I, it could have been less. I mean, I, I actually guess... it may it may have been nine and change. Yeah, when you think exactly. Oh. And a, a couple of electrum pieces. And I say I had to get my electrum out. Like that was the situation. Like I had to find some. Like that's that's the situation. And I say, but 
So if you you were not aware of that, um, this is not how I this is not how I prefer to do business. Um, but I suspect that you would probably prefer your hell contract to the one I would give you to sign. I was uh, <laughs> Viari was actually just really wondering if her contract was probably better than his. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, obviously we can cross that bridge when we come to it. I really, I will only need your help for a brief time. There is a, an affliction, uh, that is affecting my friend here. I, I know that it's hard to tell, um, that he oh, is, yeah, he looks great. Yeah, that he's suffering from, uh, something, but there is a, a staffing issue that I need to manage because anyone who has been resurrected, and people in our line of work, I'm sure you can imagine this happens from time to time. It's a, something of an occupational hazard. We have recently learned of a device of some kind that is causing this, and uh, it is our aim to destroy it. So that sounds very familiar, and uh, myself and my good friend Diaz were also afflicted by that, but we got better because Ow. our crazy leather-headed paladin decided that she was going to, I don't know, I guess put herself in a robot body. It's complicated. Okay. She saw her god. I don't know. We were thinking that it might could be like an acai thing uh, or mangosteen. Like we didn't, maybe it's a supplement <laughs> regimen. <been> <laughs> no, that's not going to, no, that's that's not going to help. It's did, like how kale is bad for you. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> did your, your friend enter some kind of a warforged body? I, I don't know what that that is. I, Strix has no idea. <laughs> she's just like, she's just a robot lady now. We used to have a robot that followed us around that we called Murderbot who killed kids. It was a kid killing bot. Well, yeah, we, had we kept a, it for some reason. We had a beer robot. Oh, well, that's that's way better than a kid killing robot. Yeah, I was going to say, I like our robot better. <laughs> <laughs> but pretty much she sacrificed herself to cure us. Oh, well, 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 you that's not going to yourself. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not big around that around here. That's, <laughs> no. that's, that's, that's very much off our charter. Uh, you need to find yourself a paladin of Thander because I'm not going to be able to help you with that. Mm. Yeah, I'm not. I have beef uh, with that order. So th I, I think that I think that's probably straight out. Uh, it's probably way, way easier to go kill this death god or whatever uh, than it is to get a favor out of that order. So um, wow. that's, that's the plan. And um, <laughs> this airship is going the right way uh, to solve that problem. After you have resolved this issue, I promise that I won't summon you in the future unless I feel like it. <laughs> oh, great. So I'm going to turn into your, into, your, into your party trick at the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the but, inn, it, but it's an, just... an hour at most. It's like, here, I'll summon a, a cripplingly depressed tiefling to, to, to dance for you. <laughs> or do something to eat snails. And cry. Professionally, yeah, fair, but I like doing that. So <laughs> yeah. don't make me dance. I'll eat as many snails as you want. Well, it's a very specific um, skill set that you're offering, um, but uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I attend a lot of events, and uh, maybe we can line something up. She doesn't understand at all what you're saying. Yeah. She's just like, oh, all right. <laughs> and actually, Viari's attention is really wandered at this point, <laughs> um, and so he's like, uh, so there, I heard a bunch of names. We're gonna we're gonna wreck something. It's pretty, like, what you're saying is adventure awaits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, could, could you just say that for me? Yeah. Adventure awaits! Oh, okay. See? There. Great. All right. Okay, uh, Time drink. passes. Yeah. Time passes. <laughs> <laughs> the ship makes a long journey to the distant land of Chult. Uh, long now, Jim, Jim, how many hit points do you have? Currently? At, at full. At full, 38. Okay. Um, the journey uh, takes weeks. Uh and during that time, uh, you get to know Strix a little bit better. Uh, you know that she's just a mess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a dumpster fire, actually. Yeah. Uh, that, that her party, uh, she, she refers to often as the waffle crew. And uh, that she thinks they're not very good at what they do. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, you, when you say a mess, is this like she's, I mean, because... Context counts for a whole lot here. Uh, like, is it that she is kind of skittish being summoned onto a flying ship for a quest that she didn't agree to? Or is it like, does she hear voices? Or has, have I have I found her in yeah. my cabin at night smelling my hair? <laughs> that, that may be. Yeah. <laughs> she might be stealing your hair and okay. tucking it away yeah. in her robe after you've combed 
Uh, <laughs> she, she slips into your room to get all the little bits of uh, little follicles off the bristles of your comb and, or brush. And that's about it. That's about as freakish as it gets. But she does use a lot of words you don't understand what they mean hmm. and calls people names for no reason. Uh, She's hmm. calling all of you Barmy, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah, Barmy, yeah. Burks, all the mm-hmm. classics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just like a uh, regional thieves camp. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah, a, it does sound very much like that. Um, but at least you are comforted over time by the fact that most of the time she kind of keeps and mumbles to herself. Uh, she doesn't seem to be, <laughs> she doesn't abuse anybody or threaten anybody. And Huge She's plus. also trying to send a message probably to her friends by like making little like notes and just like throwing them over the ship that just say like, help me. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, help. she might, when she gets help. a little bit brave, she might make a net for herself and kind of like try to scoop birds as they go past <laughs> and tie, tie little them. messages to the birds <laughs> and then let them go. No, it's like, it's like fishing. It's like reverse fishing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And as she does it, she looks really like suspicious, but she's obviously doing it, but she'll just quickly just like and just like throw the bird out and just look back. Like, I think I think Jim, if if he saw this at some point, would come and sit down and just produce a little dove for you. Mm. Aw. If you need to send like messages, birds. I got you. That's nice. And she just like ignores you and then just keeps trying to catch them. <laughs> it's just you have a you have like a dove in each hand. It's like these are yeah. also birds. These I start releasing <laughs> them over the edge so that she can catch them in the net. Nice. She eats nice. she eats your dove and then catches her own. Bites the head no, off she'll of stick it. one in her robe, actually. She'll just put one in her robe and you don't know where it goes. <laughs> no, but yeah. everywhere she walks around in the uh in the ship, it's just brrr. <laughs> too real That's too it. real there's no sound <laughs> uh, as the as your journey to Chult reaches its end and uh, you can see this vast beautiful continent appear on the horizon uh, with big tall mountains and lush jungles and belching volcanoes sending ash high up into the sky. Jim, you have uh, continued to withered away over this time to the point that you have your maximum hit points have dropped by 10. What? <laughs> he, he didn't have a lot of hit points He's to begin with. He's already at 38. Yeah, now, now your maximum hit points are 28. Thank so you for I'll, doing I'll that talk, math for me. I'll, I'll <laughs> talk to Jim a little bit as we're coming in. I'm like, okay, so what I've gathered is you know, I'm not saying I brought you back from the dead, but I did I, that once, remember, bring you back from the dead. And that's what the problem is. But when I brought you back, like you were fine. I'm fine yeah. now. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so here's here's just a thought, right? You can see he forgot you... to put his lipstick on this morning. So there are all these like, <laughs> cracks and splits in his mouth. You can see that the tears have just like ruined my powder. <laughs> so here's my thought is that you know, if we killed you again, I could bring you back and maybe you'd be fine for a while again. Or maybe you would be double sick. I, it's, it seems, I just don't know. This is a little bit beyond me, but I thought I would bounce that off you because you're the magicker. <laughs> uh, I, that doesn't sound like a great idea. I mean, I'm not, okay. you know, because I feel good now. Are you Okay. You know, I feel solid. I just didn't okay. iron, I just didn't iron man. An iron wizard. Okay. Strix, Strix will like look over from the side of the ship as she's listening and there's like feathers sticking out of her mouth. And she's like, that's not going to work. And she like takes the feathers out. <clears throat> if nothing else, I'll, then we, we, we very easily, the conversation transitions to like good techniques for the application of foundation. You know, like, it's like if you, you're an autumn and, uh, and that means that you really, you should first you've laid down the base and then there's some, some color and then some powder over the top. And, you know, just very, it's like, Hey, and I've got some stuff here, right? Here's the brushes you use. I'm actually it's, really uh, appreciative of that. <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, Jim, after Viari gives you your first makeover and you're looking at yourself in the mirror, you can't remember the last time you looked so grand. Um, <laughs> I'm glowing now. He was absolutely <laughs> right. Yeah. You are definitely an autumn. Yeah. I, something black <laughs> dribbles out of my mouth and I, and I start to wipe it away and smile. Yeah. I'm pretty. <laughs> uh, as the ship passes over this great bay... Uh, surrounded by cliffs, uh, it approaches a city that's built on the shore uh, near the only stretch of beach you've been able to see um, for miles. 
This city is absolutely magnificent. It sort of rises and falls with the topography. It has some large gold-domed buildings on its highest hills with bridges connecting them over the lower parts of the city, Wow! which are still quite handsome, beautiful, and uh, well-decorated. The entire city is enclosed by walls, except for the face uh, toward the bay. Uh, but even that has uh, walls partially enclosing it and a great chain gate covering the harbor uh, to protect, you assume, against pirates and the, that kind of thing. Uh, there are creatures you've never seen before, but only in, except in books. Uh, you'd call them pteranodons or flying gnashers uh, that uh, move around the nearby peaks uh, circling them. Uh, but uh, the city itself is very, very busy and bustling, and there are lots of ships in the harbor, many of them with very colorful sails bearing and flags from nations you've probably never visited or seen or heard of before. So are these, do these um, flying Nashers, are they interested at all in the airship? Uh, they, none of them have shown any indication of getting anywhere near the ship. I'm so glad to hear that. Yep. And uh, I'd like everybody to make a perception check. Mm -hmm. Can do. Twenty! Wow, Yay. I'm rolling so much better because I'm not uh, on a normal uh, stream. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I have a I have a uh, a legendary propensity for low rolls. So I've got a a twenty six. Oh, Dang. I don't perceive anything. <laughs> well, there's a mirror nearby, so uh, I'm <laughs> an adjusted an adjusted twenty. Okay. Yeah, Jim is still just so combing his hair. Everyone but Jim. Notices as you're uh, passing over or um, going through the bay, there you see down below in the waters of the bay a large tortoise or turtle. Uh, it's so large as to be almost the size of an island, and it's moving just below the surface of the water. And you, it's so big that you can see it from this height. It seems to just have made the bay its home, but you've never seen a sea creature so humongous. Uh, the other thing you notice is that flying up out of the city toward the airship is a golden figure. And as it gets closer, you can see that it appears to be a humanoid with dragon-like qualities, golden scales covering its body and a head that is more dragon than man. But not, and, but not, not a dragonborn to our conception? Not a dragonborn, no. This is some sort of other draconic humanoid creature. You can see it has these sail-like wings similar to those of a gold dragon as yeah. it uh, comes up toward you. Its wings um, kind of undulate yeah. and carry it through the air. Uh, you can see as it approaches that those wings appear to glisten with magic as though they are not actually part of the creature but were created for him to allow him to fly. Some kind of mechanism? Ooh. Or spell this is terrifying. or something. Weird. Strix yes. is gonna hide. Yeah, yeah. That's, okay. that's legit. <laughs> that, yeah, you you, you can find a nice place behind the the uh, the bronze furnace underneath the giant balloon that basically provides a lift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. And she doesn't lose um, any points for that. That is the right response. <laughs> that's the sort of initiative yeah. you like to see. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and and Scubby is probably on the prow, uh, asking if he should arm the harpoon cannon. Actually, uh, man, woman, or other. Uh, with your role, you're able to ascertain that it's, oh, hmm. it's a, if it's some sort of half dragon or some such, it would be very, very hard to tell its gender. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, I say, I say, Scubby, and I say, listen. And this also goes for you, Elandria, Hibner, and Tweed. I say, <laughs> I don't go anywhere near any of the weapons on this ship. I want you to turn the ship left and expose the deck uh, out toward this creature. We'll cross the other bridge when we come to it. But I, I, don't, I don't want that thing to come over here and for you to just be, you know, lying there, resting against a fucking crossbow. Hibner's like, well, somebody's bitchy today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they all do exactly what you want. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just looking down. I'm just saying, like, it'd probably be safe to throw him from here. We could just pick him up later, just right out, <laughs> just right out of the boat. I'll cover. I'll cross that later. Um, so yeah, it's so basically I turn it so that we can sort of present ourselves in an audience with this creature. My suspicion okay. is that if it really wants to destroy the ship, it could do it pretty easily. It has magic wings and is also some kind of draconic aspect. As it flies up uh, level with the deck, 
it sort of hangs in the air next to you, and you can see that it is definitely a half dragon, a half man, half dragon, uh, gold scales. He clutches a staff with a green orb at the top of it, uh, and he holds up his hand in a gesture that suggests he's here for peaceful reasons, and says, I mean you no harm. May I come aboard? I am Zindar, the quartermaster. I have one question. Not This is not for Zindar, the quartermaster. Uh, this is for Chris Perkins, the dungeon master. Half dragon? Do I have any idea what that is? Half dragon? Um, like on your mother's I, side? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, so make a history check or arcana check, if you prefer. We'll see how it works. Is if there were two quartermasters and they have a kid that both quarters come together, it makes a half. Half master. And if that, it, yeah. then it would be half a dragon. Can Jim come out and make an arcana check at this point? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I get a two, 19. and that is when I okay. that is when I without looking without turning my face away. That's when I snap a couple times in the mm. classic Jim snap. Uh, look at this fashion. Yeah. So I I come out. I got a nineteen on Arcana. Splendid. Uh, you've heard about half dragons, yes. When a when a mommy dragon and a daddy <laughs> human love each other very much. Uh, no. Uh, when a dragon in polymorphed form oh. mates with another creature, the union ah. sometimes produces a half-dragon offspring. The, a creature might also transform into a half-dragon as a result of a mad wizard's spell or a ritual bath in dragon's blood. Yeah, see, I think this is actually like one of Jim's fetishes. Mm. Like <laughs> polymorph <laughs> dragon mating with that. Like, he's got books of this shit. <laughs> he knows yeah. exactly what this is. I've yeah. seen your etchings, man. <laughs> and you know, you know, Jim, based on your role, that gold dragons are the most lawful and good of all dragon. Oh, kind. right. Yeah. I, hmm. I, so I assume I relate all that to to Omen. This is super hot. What his folks did. <laughs> the, whole, if, the whole situation. The whole situation has really got me worked up. But the fact that it's a gold dragon and lawful good, that means they probably did it missionary, which is a little bit of a, a letdown for <laughs> it you. No, that's, down. that's even better. It's like, oh, it's forbidden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. If Strix notices that, that you're like eyeing this this dragon person really weird, she's just going to hide more. Yeah. <laughs> she's just going to hide she's gonna, she's further. Gonna, she's going to see like how long she can live inside the furnace. Yeah. Do, you like, uh, do you have any pictures of your folks or anything? No, like no. That? I put my hand on his mouth. Like no, like like imagine like like palming a basketball. I just put my whole hand like on the front of his face like and then just sort of album. Scoot, Everybody's got a just family album. Push him back. I oh just, no, his makeup. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is. I push it back so there is like an omen hand imprint on the makeup, and I just wipe it off on my tabard. Uh, and I say, uh, I'm Ominifus Hereward Drawn of Acquisitions Incorporated. Uh, I greet you. Come aboard. Uh, he will land and uh, he'll, uh, his staff, tip, the bottom of the staff will just sort of tap the, the deck as he does. And uh, uh, you can see he is wearing uh, a th sort of a thin wizard robe over his uh, golden scales. And he just sort of looks around at the crew and uh, says, uh, do you have a ship's manifest that I can inspect? Oh, th that seems exactly like the sort of thing that Omen would have. Absolutely. You pull it out from... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the, you, you, he looks, instantaneously. <laughs> he looks it over, uh, sort of flips through it very quickly, um, nods approvingly, hands it back to you, and he says, all is well. Welcome to Port Nyan Zaru. Uh, so it, uh, it, it pleases us to be here. Are all visitors greeted such? Oh, yes. Visitors of every kind are welcome here. Traders in particular. Stay as long as you wish. If there's anything I can do to direct you, please don't hesitate to ask. Yeah, we're just trying to find the soulmonger. So, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, I go, I'm like, Viari is like. Yeah. Strix just like peeks up and is like. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, just trying to, we need to find it. Like, we got to find the soulmonger right now. It's out there, mongan souls. And we got to make sure that it just, Stops monging them, basically. Like, I feel like that's a slur. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and it's just like, don't. I just want to talk to this soul monger and be like, don't mong anymore. Like, you're done. You know what I mean? Yeah. He says, I am not aware of this soul monger. Do I think that that's true? Uh, you can make an insight check. Yeah. At 20. Wow. Uh, you believe he's truthful. Okay. And he says, because yeah, this, I mean, this seems like a, this seems like a powerful 
motherfucker, did, did the information we get out of that uh, out of that giant oracle like are we like way ahead of the game like that's what omen is thinking right now it's like did are do we know something other people don't know about you this? think that might be possible yes yeah um because in my mind i'm sort of flipping through all the information that we learned from the oracle and i i ask him i say have have any in your town uh there is a a disease not a disease one can catch um, but a disease of the soul. Are there those? Uh, are there those in your town who suffer from it also? Yes, I have heard of others affected by this curse. Yeah, have you have you come upon? I mean, here in the in the lush jungles of Chult, perhaps mangosteen or uh, acai berries, um, <coughs> antioxidants. Like, are there any uh, scrubs uh, made from uh, local materials that? can provide relief to these doomed souls. He says, The jungles of Chult have become so dangerous in recent years that no one in Port Nianzaru leaves, with the exception of a handful of adventurers and guides who know certain ways through. Where can you direct me to someone in town uh, that might be able to help us get our bearings in the jungle near to Port Nianzaru? Ah, well, if you're going to pursue this matter, I would suggest you talk to... First... Wakanga Otamu. He is one of the seven merchant princes of the city, and he is our greatest expert in magic and lore. He, more than anyone, I suspect, might know something about this curse that affects, that affects uh, so many people. Do you, take a, do you take a number? Or how, how do you meet... Merchant prince seems like a, a very high station. Where I'm from, yes. you don't meet princes. Uh, he points over the deck at one of the highest buildings on one of the hills with a great sort of golden dome, and he says, that building there is called Golden Throne. That's where the seven merchant princes convene and grant audiences. Your best chance of meeting him there. You have the best chance of meeting him there, unless you know someone who knows him well, in which case you could get a personal audience. But I would suggest you try Golden Throne first. If you're looking for a guide, the merchant prince who has the monopoly on guides is Jobal. And he kind of says that name with a bit of distaste. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's good to know. That's good to know. It, you can is, also gain an audience with him at Golden Throne. Is the distaste... Can I detect if the distaste is with the name or with the monopoly? Uh, you think it's, um, based on your earlier insight check, that it is based on uh, Zindar's personal... Uh, you, you believe Zindar and this Jobal... Don't see eye to eye. Beef. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Understood. Understood. Well, yeah, my feeling is that, I mean, is there a, is there a clearing on this hill nearby to, uh, nearby uh, you to don't, this place? You don't see a safe landing place uh, around Golden Throne itself. Uh, Zindar suggests that uh, you can dock your ship uh, anywhere in and around the harbor and then uh, just walk your way up the hill through the city. It will give you a chance to see some of the sights and local color. I, I say, Zindar, I, I hope that I, I, mean, I mean no offense by this, but I really, really like this boat. Is this, tell me about this harbor. I mean, I see you got the chain. Like, what are the chances of pirates coming and taking it? Like, There is no chance. We do have pirate problems here, um, not say, in the city I, I say, itself. I say, well, you should understand... I'm I'm a bit of a magician myself. I give I look over at Jim, and then from inside the <laughs> tabard, out comes the card. I say, I offer pirate solutions. <laughs> uh, he will take that card and say, Well, we have here's here's our situation. Our Chips parents are- went away for a week's vacation. <laughs> <laughs> now, they did leave the keys to the brand new Porsche. <laughs> I have it on good authority. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, Chris. That's what I no, did that's was fine. wrong. And I no, that's great. <laughs> Our harbor is very well defended, and the ships here are guarded day and night. Your vessel will be quite safe with me. Perfect. Once you leave the harbor and head out into the bay, the bay's defense is entrusted to a dragon turtle named Aramag. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, man, I that's bet pretty he, solid. I bet he is pay bad news. Aramag for <laughs> safe passage through the bay. Dude, I can't even like I can't even hide the fact like how hard I'm geeking out about this defender turtle. I'm like that's... I, I start looking over the edge and I'm like, 
How do they pay him? <laughs> in gold and gems. They just push crates over the side yep. of their ship. Oh, that's yep. awesome. And then, uh, but that is pretty great. Beyond the bay, out into the sea, pirates roam, and we have long struggled to find out where they're hiding. We know it's somewhere on Chult, but we've never found their secret base. Their cove. There are three pirate captains who work in tandem. Hmm. We'll get back to that. I, my my friend has this disease. Um, of course. That we discussed before. Yes, uh, this is certainly a more pressing matter. Yeah, yeah. Once we manage that, we'll come back and solve your uh, your pirate problem too. That's it. Would be no problem for us. Excellent. Well, if there's anything more I can do for you, don't hesitate to ask. Oh no, I, I've taken it up. I've taken up quite enough of your time, Zindar. Uh, it has been our, our great pleasure uh, to make your acquaintance. I wish you well on your journeys, wherever they take you. And you as well. And he flies off. Yep. I, say, I, I, I just kind of watch him and I say, good guy. Good guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll wander over to, to Omen, you know, as the ship kind of banks down mm-hmm. towards the dock. Yeah. And I'll be like, okay, so if we're way out in front of this, right? You know, people probably know that some things are going wrong with some people. Mm-hmm. And but here's the thing. Not many people can afford the juice to come back from the dead. Yeah. These people will be powerful and they will be uh, not to put too fine a point on it. I mean, they will have money. Right. Yeah. So if we're going to do this anyway and we're about to go talk to a bunch of these high up folks, how about... You see where I'm going with this, right? You have problems because people you know. How would you like for us to provide the solution to either you or the people you know that are important people who have money? You want them to not die. You see where I'm going? Yes. Get them okay. to fund this this whole thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we're we're quite on the same page. You have arrived uh, at where I was an hour ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. Just wanted to make sure. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome back, Gary. I, I kind of zoned out. There were, like I said, there were a lot of names, and I was super hungover when the rope came down. Oh, I can't even um, imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It seemed like some rough characters down there. Yep. So I'm sure yeah. Strix has never heard uh, planning such as this. She's <laughs> never heard any, any sort of like organized planning, and she's just watching over the like the little furnace, just like. Wow, they're so <laughs> smart. <laughs> what an she operation. Even know, she's like, do we even have money? We Literally, that was a question she asked once. She was like, do we have money? <laughs> so she's impressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, All right, it's, it's so. A, yeah, so, so Strix, so uh, I'm going to go back behind the, uh, the stove uh, and say, Strix, I'm going to paint a picture for you. And it's a picture we're going to paint collaboratively. It's a thought picture. Now. Let's say that someone came and tried to kill us. It happens from time to time. How do Every you day. try to kill them? Just kind of break it down for me. What's your basic approach? So I will misty step to a high spot, mm-hmm. and then I will fireball them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, do you do that uh, completely without warning? Are your friends occasionally near this? Yeah, I'm yes. super curious about that, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I can be careful. Like, I can make it go around them. Is that so? so? That's not possible. No, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. No, it can't be done. She'll defiantly, like, squeeze her brew and be like, that's it is a, true. I know magic. A foundational element of the fireball spell. It can't be diverted oh, anyway. It is. I can do whatever I want. And she just, I don't like, know. It's, this person's crazy, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm not crazy. And she just, like, shakes, like, moths out of her hat. <laughs> and <I'm> just like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's good information. And I look back at Jim and just kind of shrug like, ah. Because uh, it hasn't been my experience that um, party members can uh, escape the wrath of their wizard. Yeah, you can't. But if, he's talking nuts. Like, <laughs> if anything, I always... No, no, you can. I think he's lying. <laughs> I think he's... So he, even, like point, I think. he even told me once that, like my hair was the sacrifice he needed to fuel his magic. And that's why I was constantly getting burned off. Well, yeah, you're all the one time. of the components of my spells. That's true. Yeah, I, I but, think but hold on, but that doesn't make Barbie. any sense because you cast the spell first and then all my hair burns Who's off. Who's the 10th level magician here? Which, yeah, which is yeah. a very good point. Yeah. yeah. One of the things you've noticed over time as on this journey, Jim, <laughs> is that 
uh, Strix, uh, for all of her um, claims of magic, you haven't seen her produce or even look at a spell book. Mm. Oh, okay. Um, can I... Can I make another attempt at this point to size mm-hmm. her up magically? Mm-hmm. She will take a piece of chalk and just randomly draw symbols that mean nothing around the ship, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. And it's like after she, after she does this and then loses interest and then goes to another one, I'm like, I'm pointing at Hibner and then I'm pointing at the symbol and then I'm making the internationally recognized sign for wash this shit off. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I have no 17. idea what that stuff is. 17 I is very good. I was 17 hard. on Arcana and I just am like, can you even cast spells? Because you don't know what you're talking about. You think that she might in fact be a sort of weird kind of wizard called a sorcerer. Someone whose magic isn't learned, but that sort of comes oh. from within or through some bizarre birthright. She's a pervert, guys. <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> no, I've seen this before. It's gross. I, yeah. I, I, I boggle. I, I, I look at Jim yeah. and, and the term pervert coming out of Jim. <laughs> and I look from Jim and I look to her and it might be the first time ever that you have seen me dumbfounded, like absolutely <laughs> stupefied and without words. I'm wondering what this person could do that would earn that word from Jim. Strix is very confused. She's yeah. just like, no one calls me mean words like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's basically like it's a creative magic user. Right. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, we're talking about someone who can cast spells, but they do it in a intuitive, instinctual way. Right, yeah. I mean, Jim is Jim has gone through all the proper schooling. He's got the books and the well, no, spells. Well, no, no, he didn't go to wizard school to be called Mr. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I went to four years of wizarding school. I went well, through I nine years. I mean, four years of wizarding school. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fire, as, as, fire aside, let's say, just for example, uh, like... Hibner here fell off the boat, and I, I push him. <laughs> oh, no. I say, could you do something about that? Uh, is the act, did you actually push him? Uh, can I misty step and grab him and misty step back on? Uh, if you, you would be too far away to misty step back on. Oh, no. <laughs> and, well, I have my broom, so it's okay. I'll misty yeah. step and grab him and then broom back. All right, so she disappears off the deck, <laughs> appears 30 feet underneath the ship, I want you to make a strength athletics check, Strix, to grab right. hold of Hibner. Why do I always do this? I always do this to myself. <laughs> you, co- you, you commit to heroic action? Listen, I that's do. what I want to see in an employee. <laughs> Jim is just watching. Oh, great. I got a nine. All right. You grab him. You rip off his sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> and are left holding his sleeve as he continues to fall down past you. And I, I, look, at, <laughs> I, 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 look, at, I look at Jim. I'm like, could you? <laughs> uh, I can't cast Featherfall on him. Why not? <laughs> I said I can't. I can cast Featherfall. Oh, okay. I, yeah. I can't bring oh, him I back, it. but I, I can make I it to polymorph him. There you I go. polymorph him into a bat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not realizing what you're doing. He will attempt to resist the spell and rolls a natural 20. <laughs> 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 These people just want to die. <laughs> so he continues to fall. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I'm like... This is an uh, old drill for me and for me and Jim. I know that Jim's got him before he's going to splatter with Featherfall. Yeah, but Strix I just, doesn't Jim know just that. shakes Strix his head. I, I do it. I look at Jim. I'm like, and I point. And if he doesn't do anything, I, I frown. And then I point really emphatically. <laughs> Hibner hits the water. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Strix is reminded of the time that she cast Hold Person on Irina. <laughs> and disappears no. into the harbor. Yeah. Okay. How hard did he uh, hit? Like, can Hibner... Can tieflings swim? I think their bones are weird. You look over um, the edge, and uh, just based on everything you know about tieflings, uh, no. <laughs> okay, then actually, I will. I will dive in. I, I so actually. Gonna, and and how how high up are we? Uh, you're about 150 feet above the water. Yeah, that's a good dive. I'll do that. Yep. Strix will go down with their broom too, and just like frantically look around, like, "Oh no, they're dead! Oh no, I did this. This is my fault." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So right. this is so. Omen is just like okay. All right. So whenever they do something I haven't explicitly commanded them to do, mm-hmm. it goes like this, 
And, <laughs> and so I'm just going down. Tweed is like, Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You and me both, kid. And so I, I'm basically like, we're, we're moving this thing down, directly down into a berth. All right. Um, and, you know, we're, ropes are being prepared. Mm-hmm. Omen's going through and like, t- like testing the tension on each of these crossbows. Like he's basically doing like a post-flight check. Got it. All right. Yep, Elandria will help you with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, yeah, um, I'd like Viari and Strix just to make a perception check to see if you can find poor Hibner. Oh, Hibner. Yeah, 26. Oh. Yeah. I got a uh, 20. All right, yes, you're both able to spot him. So, Strix, as you sort of circle over the water, um, Viari comes up with Hibner under one arm. Um, they both sort of surface. It looks like and- Hibner's still breathing. Oh, good. <laughs> Can I now polymorph him into a bat? <laughs> <laughs> yes. As, you, as you're holding him, Viari, suddenly you lose all grip on him as he turns into a bat and starts to flap above the water. Actually, he's, he's unconscious. He, he's unconscious, so he just lies in the water. <laughs> I, just floats on the surface. I, I, I pull him out of the water. I did not know that tieflings could do this. <laughs> suddenly, you, know, you, know, you know what, though? But you're also not surprised. You're like, well, fucking, I guess that's... <laughs> yeah. Yes, I've never. Uh, I'll remember this for the future. Yes, I'm right. tiefling's and, wet. Uh, I guess you bring <laughs> you, you. You come up onto sh- onto the dock, Viari, and then you give the bat little bat CPR. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> It was like one fi- like two little fingers, like teet, 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 teet. yep. And then it sort of spits up some water, and then uh, it starts to cough and kind of flounder around on the dock. I'll, I, I'll, I'll unpolymorph him. Once all right, he, starts, he turns once back into away. himself. And then uh, turns around and punches me, <laughs> Ari. <laughs> that's, that's, that's fair. I like. I take it. I absolutely yeah. take it on the chin, and I'm like, I'm like, man. But the, no, he punches you, you in the nuts. Oh well, wow. the boat is that's coming what tieflings down. do. The, the boat is like coming down, and I'm watching this, and I'm looking angrily over the side of the boat, and I say, authorized, authorized, <laughs> authorized this. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, Strix is you worried know. for her safety. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> You, you, I, what, what can I say? You were right that she actually can do magic, and here's your fifty gold pieces. You know, I and I. And there's like, fork. you're lucky I don't hellish rebuke you. Well, we'll talk about that when one of my testicles comes back out of my torso. <laughs> Jim is not impressed. He goes walking. Out. Yeah, I hope it doesn't. Saw. <laughs> like, even bat turning. <laughs> No. Can Strix tell that, that he's not? Can she like just notice that he's just sassing her still? Oh, I don't think it's hard to notice when Jim okay. sasses you. <laughs> <laughs> there are many it, people now in the harbor who are all kind of staring at the airship um, in wonder because it's such a splendid craft, and also marveling at the chaos that uh, you guys have wrought. Uh, I take off. I take off my shirt because it's wet. Actually, I just I like to take off my shirt a yes. lot. And, and the, actually, it's quite warm excuse. under yeah. the blazing sun here in this tropical city. You find it quite yeah. warm. So, yes, you peel off that shirt and you feel so much better. Mm-hmm. Uh, the familiar sounds of the harbor are all around you. The creaking ropes, the slapping waves, the hairy barrel, heavy barrels. Hairy, hairy barrels? barrels? <laughs> hairy <laughs> barrels like, is the dock master. Heavy, heavy, heavy barrels. <laughs> Chult, like, hairy barrels, the dock the, master. The island realm of Chult is very strange. Enjoy yes. their hairy barrels. <laughs> yes. You hear uh, shouting and cursing in unfamiliar languages uh, filled with the uh, sort of sing-songy words from some of the dock workers as they engage with their tasks and and, uh, sing and um, generally try to keep their spirits up. Uh, You smell many unfamiliar uh, spice aromas uh, and the aromas of tropical fruit uh, as well as fish, tar, the smell of canvas and sail. Uh, Beyond that, the city is an explosion of color. Uh, buildings are painted in bright shades of blue, green, orange, and salmon pink. Their walls adorned with murals portraying giant reptiles and mythical heroes. Every building sports baskets and clay urns of colorful flowers or is draped in leafy flowering vines. And minstrels in bright clothing adorned with feathers and shells perform on the street corners. You can see pennants and sun awnings fluttering atop the city walls and crowds of children dressed in feathered hats and capes racing around, chasing each other, squealing in delighted terror as a street performer, costumed as a big-toothed lizard, stomps and roars behind them. Listen, do I think that this is just Tuesday, or do I think that uh, we, have, we landed <laughs> this like seems during to be per- the... perfectly normal day. <laughs> the Tooth Festival. Yeah, okay. no, this is just normal business. Yeah, the delight, is, the delight is absolute. 
Like mm-hmm. Omen is not like a professionally delighted individual. Yeah. But I like this place like just from the jump. Like yep. that is exactly what I like. And I want yep. I want to find where these fruits are being sold. And I okay. want to buy one yes. of each. Yeah, there are street vendors who are basically walking around with baskets of fruit, handing them out and taking coin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I see any on the ground, I'm gonna pick them up. <laughs> okay. I'm not paying for this fruit. <laughs> yes. This is perfectly uh, good two. fruit. Just yeah. laying fish around. Like anything on the ground, I'm just gonna stick with my robe. Sure. Just brush the sand off. It'll be fine. So I'm yeah. gonna bring yeah, exactly. Tweed with me, sort of out like up okay. the dock, and then sort of like where the dock becomes the city. Right. He proudly follows you because he's your man. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And it's, I want to make sure that, basically, I want to make sure that the boat gets provisioned mm-hmm. out, out of these markets right here. So obviously we want some for ourselves, but I want to make sure that food gets loaded back up on the boat. Great, yes. I'm assuming there is some sort of harbor master we're going to have to pay a like a docking fee whatever when you ask around uh you do find a harbor master and he says that your uh zindar has waived your fee oh oh okay interesting now looking around this place there's kind of there's two kinds of ports one of which like where zindar is absolutely in charge and everything is very well organized mm-hmm. And then there's the other sort of port where he thinks he's in charge and our ship is going to get robbed if I don't pay somebody off. Which one is this? You are in the upscale, uh, well-tended okay. part of the harbor. Cool. <laughs> no uh, there's, a beautiful, there's a beautiful ship uh, not too far from where you're birthed currently. It's a, it's a very sleek, elegant sloop with a big triangular sail. It looks extremely fast. Uh, beautifully tended. Um, it's got some amazing woodwork, and uh, the sail is bright blue. It and uh, uh, you get waves, friendly waves from the crew there, and from some of the dock workers, your neighbors. What ho! <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna send the fruit baskets. Okay. So obviously, <laughs> there's different spars, right? There's different. You know, I'm yep. sure there's different docks that come out. Everybody mm-hmm. who is on our dock that goes out, I mean, it's just gonna be a couple gold to get this. Um, mm-hmm. It's gonna be worth it for me. I make sure that. Friendly fruit baskets get delivered up oh, and splendid. down this thing, but I mean the boats that I know about are pretty workaday. They're you know, they're work vessels. It's like an old cart. Yeah, I'm not, I, you I, see one. There's there's a big galleon um, uh, some ways off that you can see that sort of stands proudly above all the others. It's got the flag of Baldur's Gate, um, long ways away, uh, flapping on its mast. Yes. So a, a a galleon, like all the rigging that has to be like just swarming with sailors. Yep. So it. It's it's a it's a galleon of 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 semen is <laughs> <laughs> yes yes okay I was just absolutely checking. I am yep. frowning uh, I just want to make sure that everybody is aware the frown is real I love it yeah uh, you also see flags for other places like Athkatla Zazaspur and even oh, Waterdeep wild so many places yeah yeah they're all here they're all here yep I have a pap- I, I, like a whole papaya. <laughs> Mm, um, yes. So are we still on the dock? What, what is our You're plan? moving around the harbor. We probably need a place to stay. Well, let's establish home base in an inn before we go, before we go try to talk to anybody. Yes. Uh, one inn that comes highly recommended is a place called Kaya's House of Repose. And mm. uh, it's, it's uh, got good crowd, good clientele. It's in a, a kinder, gentler part of the city, and, but not too far from the market bazaar. Are they gonna like let Strix into these places? Because like I just feel like uh, so dirty. most of the most of the faces that you see around you are dark skinned. Um, in that way, you you look like pale ghosts um, next to a few of them. But Strix, uh, nobody has really paid much attention to you since you. Well, that's not true. They saw you flying around on a broom. So uh, yeah, um, they you're given a wide berth, but. The, they're not throwing stuff at you, which is oh, a good. step up from some Huge of the other plus. places you've been to. It is. To. No, she's very happy about that. So she yeah. can just mind her own business and pick up her trash. And there are there are there are sort of small uh, gangs of uh, costumed children who sort of run around you um, playfully. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like and, and, uh, just like paralyzed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them might stop, actually pull her mask off her face to get a good look at you and just sort of stared at you in wide eyed wonder. All right, when she and then she'll that, hand you a go. stick of candy. <laughs> Wait, candy? Yeah. Oh boy. She's like, <laughs> she's like never seen anything so beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like this this is the opposite. Yeah. I say this is right. this is the polar opposite of how it works where I'm from. Is like, I have to give if, them candy. <laughs> yeah. She thinks that if you shake them, maybe they'll give you more candy. So we'll just like shake a couple of them. Just a few like, pieces more candy. of a few more pieces of candy fall out into the dirt. You can pick those up before the kids run away. Okay. Screaming, I'm it, sure. The heat is probably making Jim's makeup run, so he's yes. got oh. himself a little parasol now. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yes, he's you can find to stay it. out of the sun. Is yeah. it lavender? Like a like a. Oh yeah, absolutely. Now you can get you can get a silk parasol. You can get a um, a leather hide parasol, or you can get a feather parasol. Ooh. Wow, I think I'm going to go purple silk if I can do that. Okay, mm. done. Good. Yeah. Yes. Um, if we're doing a little bit of shopping, I need <laughs> to uh, I need to pick up a couple of different sets of clothes mm -hmm. um, because I cannot blend in wearing what I'm wearing here. So I don't necessarily want the native garb. I want one okay. set of native garb, uh, but also somebody who looks like me here, but more native to here, what they would wear. Okay. Not what I'm wearing now. Right. Um, the, the, the typical attire here is light and loose. So you can certainly get something sort of billowy robes, but very, very almost ephemerally light um, gossamer material. Oh yeah, that's then you, that's yeah. all. VR is all over this style. Yeah, you can have a big hat. You can have sort of a, a turban. Um, Ooh, that's. Uh, yeah, well, definitely we have to. I I burn. I sunburn real easy, <laughs> yeah. so uh, I do need a big hat of some yeah. sort. Yeah, you said to go okay. like just. I mean, one hundred percent. Like that's going to be how it works. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it says a lot. For, among other things, it says that you've been here long enough to know how to tie it. Oh, fuck. No, we're going full bore, fancy ass Errol Flynn, like the pirate shirt, except it's like pastel silk. And I've got my fucking rapier. That's that's way I, when I come out yeah, of, there of go. the the inn, having having commit, uh, completed my Sailor Moon fucking transformation sequence. <laughs> nice, but it billows. I mean, like this, like the sails in the harbor. Like it. This is a this is a um, a swashbuckling shirt that has mm -hmm. that nautical spirit that longs mm -hmm. to be a sail itself. Yep. 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 Yes, right. you come. You come out looking like a prince. Okay, that's there. Yeah. The whole everything else in the game is gravy after this. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you you all notice that uh, something you haven't seen before. Ankylosaur is uh, tied to ropes and is pulling, helping two of them actually. Two of these ankylosaurs, these big dinosaurs, are pulling a ship into a berth. Wow. Jesus, for real? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's new. Uh, that's authentically new. Strix yep. is debating on whether or not she should hide, but there's just so many scary things that yeah. she'll just stand still. Yep. <laughs> just try to stay equidistant from each scary thing. <laughs> yes. Just and Strix, like as, you, as, you move deeper in, <laughs> as you move deeper into the city, Strix, you realize it gets a little bit harder just to avoid people in general. Um, <laughs> she hates this place, and it's hot. <laughs> Uh, but if she, you know, if she stands anywhere for very long, people will eventually take notice of her and avoid her just because there's this sort of pig pen like cloud that surrounds her. <laughs> yeah. One of Jim's highest stats is actually animal handling. Oh, excellent. Um, so I think Jim would walk like, if he's never seen a dinosaur like before, I think he would walk over and just try to put a hand on, you know, yeah, like Jurassic um, Park style. Yep. Go ahead and make a check. <laughs> he wants to feel it breathing. 18. Uh, yeah. You're able to walk over. Um, not freak it out with your giant parasol and uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically put a hand on this beast. The beast seems kind of oblivious to you, um, doesn't protest in any way, but some of his handlers kind of come at you and kind of poke you away with 10 foot poles. Uh, <laughs> and, and speaking in a language you're not familiar with, uh, thinking that you, you know, you might distract this creature or cause it to do something weird. Where like can you shouldn't, I buy you shouldn't one just of be these? Here. I point uh, at it. <laughs> they're able to intuit what you want, and they will actually sort of point you off in a direction. Um, wow. You guys, I got to get my own dinosaur while we're here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And as you lose yourself into the city, uh, looking for a, a way up to Golden Throne, Jim, you do, you do begin to see more dinosaurs in the city. Um, there are allosaurs that have riders on them oh. uh, making their way through. And yes, you do find a par- uh, a, an area which is sort of fenced off with a number of different dinosaurs in there. And they all apparently are for sale. In fact, they have big sort of foreign numbers kind of painted on their sides uh, to indicate how much they cost, like used cars. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking that. <laughs> um, one of the things you do notice is that you see one dinosaur. Uh, it is a Dimetrodon with a, s- a sail on its back. Mm-hmm. And it seems to be painted with racing stripes. A racing dinosaur? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Omen, Omen, what is our dinosaur budget for this trip? <laughs> So when I see the when I see the stripes, I assume that that means gambling, like mm. like it's an it is an instantaneous connection between dinosaurs that are painted with stripes to race on purpose, and people who exchange coins, guessing and trying to select the finest yes. dinosaur. And Omen, you quickly realize you get into conversations with some of the locals and realize that a great many people in this city speak common with a heavy dialect, but they yeah. do speak it because it's such a it's such a trade. Well, yeah, port. there's Baldur's, there's water, yeah. there's water deep Baldur's and Baldur's Gate, Gate yeah, ships exactly. right out in the harbor. And they tell you that the biggest pastime in Port Nyanzaru is dinosaur racing, and hmm. you can either uh, get in with a team as a jockey, or you can wager on the races. Wow. I, at this point, I'm thinking of things like, I don't know how much longer Jim has left. And so I'm sort of thinking like, you know what? You know, something would be special for him. <laughs> make, <laughs> make, make a, a wish, memory. Jim. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no. Exactly. I say, I say, Jim, buddy. Yeah. Do you want to ride one of those? I do. I really do. <laughs> do you want to race one of those? Yes. You want to race around real fast? I do. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and I cough up something black and I try to push it back into my mouth oh, I, think, <laughs> I think it might be something I need because you don't, you don't know 100% no. this is an important part oh, mm-hmm. oh. Here, so, so yeah we need so we know about the uh, house of rest is that what you said yeah. Yeah, the yeah, Kaya's yeah. house of repose yeah, yeah indeed indeed oh repose excuse me um, we, we're going to get a room, uh, that is, that we'll get, we'll get a room that is sufficient, but not crazy pants. Okay. Um, and then we are going to make this, we are going to make this happen for him. Okay. <laughs> you know that the next dinosaur race is scheduled for tomorrow morning. Uh, the course is, is pretty much all the way, all around the city. There are two sort of like, there's like a figure eight through the city that you can take, um, that these racers can participate in. Uh, you know, uh, based on looking at the markets and stuff, that there are several different kinds of dinosaurs that are that can be bought. Uh, there are young Allosauruses, there's Deinonychuses, Dimetrodons, Hadrosauruses, um, Triceratops, young ones. Triceratops? And, that was always yeah. my favorite. That is, that was my favorite Me too. too. Yeah. Me too. But you know what it was? You know what made it my favorite? Is that they almost always drew the Tyrannosaurus, or they always almost do the um, oh. Triceratops like goring a Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> and yeah. I just, I was like, it me. Like, that's who I am. I am <laughs> the little guy. I am the little guy that gores the larger guy. Um, the, so, the tri- right? Uh, the, yeah, the Triceratops was always the plucky underdog against the T-Rex. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Yep. So we can maintain that ahead. So so Chris Perkins, Dungeon Master. Yes. You, are you suggesting that a... Uh, a dinosaur can be purchased or the use of a dinosaur can be purchased or we can slot Jim Dark Magic into a team or, or what are the thresholds we're talking about here for delivering so if you don't want, if you didn't want to, if you didn't want to buy your own dinosaur you could try to get in with a team um, and have Jim race for them they're always looking for new jockeys now now only one person rides each dinosaur or is there a couple people on each dinosaur? Typically each dinosaur has a single rider. Okay. I, 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 I go up to Jerry and I, uh, or uh, to Omen. Yeah. And I'm like, and I can see he's sort of machinating. Um, and I'm going to guess that for some of these, maybe the bigger dinosaurs, 
it can they can benefit from more than one mm-hmm. jockey, you know, yeah. from controlment of this animal. And I, I say to Omen, I'm like, I, I know we're going to do this, and I I could not approve more. I think we could all be on this. I mean, it, it'll be hmm. Jim's special day, right? Yeah. But if we're all on this dinosaur, we will all like because we have not. As as proven by my test, did you see me testing the new employee? Oh yeah, we are not working as a team yet, um, and I think this might be a nice test run, literally a run in which we like we we learn to to work together like the well oiled machine. I know that you expect. Yeah, I think that that is going to add three hundred pounds of additional weight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Is Strix there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I say, 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 Strix, we're going to ride dinosaurs. Is that okay? Uh, (laughs) She's like, You feel sort of compelled to participate when he asks that, by the way. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, She's like, it says it, but like through gritted teeth, like, no. Like, but she also suggests that she can ride her broom next to the dinosaur and like throw water bottles or something at you guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> stay like, hydrated. Yeah, like, crew. like the the pit crew, the support. She's. I no, like she's that. Not, yeah. Also, I, I'm a little curious. In the weeks that we have been traveling with Strix, mm-hmm. I kind of, I kind of want to like draw a bead on Strix. I know what it's like to be the new intern. You know, and and though we go through them like wet Kleenex, you know, I try to make. <laughs> their brief mayfly <laughs> lives as, <laughs> as pleasant as possible. Um, and so, like, does it seem like, you know, she's obviously marching to her own drummer, but mm-hmm. does she seem, you know, do, do you, do, does your character seem pretty comfy with who she is? Um, like, or is it like she's resigned to her lot in life? Or, or it's like, this is who I am and I love it, or I've never considered anything else, or it's like, well, I guess, I guess I'm a trash witch and I will never be anything better than that. <laughs> That's probably uh, the, the, uh, the latter, yeah. So she's, okay. she's, she's a trash witch and then she's kind of just resigned to it because she did grow up in the hive and sigils, so she's very like, everything has been bad. That's, everything's bad, but she still tries to help. She still tries to help people. Like she's trying to make up for being just a garbage pile by making the world a better place, but not making herself better. <laughs> then, Very deep. Then <laughs> when I come back from like, you know, my clothes shopping, mm-hmm. I will have like had made for her a new witch hat. Oh, like, you wow. know, a, a, yeah. a new witch hat, except this one, it'll still be like made to spec, still the same level of rumpledyness, still mm-hmm. black and brimmy, but a lighter fabric because all the heat would get trapped. She's obviously sweating, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Probably. And it's got, it's got little pockets on the inside where you can pockets. put things. And so I, I, will, I will make a gift of that to her, like that when we settle into the inn, um, you know, make her a little more comfortable, let her know that she's a valued member of the team. What should I mark off in terms of like, because I'm buying clothes and I'm not bothering to steal all this stuff. Uh, if it's coming out of your personal expense account, the the whole lot is probably going to cost you about twenty gold. Okay. So when you hand it to her, she'll just like start being like, "This, this, this is so nice. You didn't even talk about Lathander once. You did something <laughs> nice for me." <laughs> She's oh, like, oh, sweetie. And, and I, I like, take it, I take a deep breath, and I kind of, I, I. I convey the body language like we could do a hug right now if you're not the sort of person who's going to like actually bite me when you get close <laughs> when you lift it when you go like to give a hug she just like gives you a weird hand touch okay <laughs> I'm, I'm totally i get that we, we hand touch and it's very like, i'm i'm hey. totally comfortable with that her mouth is just open she's like hey so, Jim, Jim comes in. You can see that his makeup is just running down his face from the sweat and and the tears. And he goes, "You know, if you want, I could give you some makeup tips. Fix up that that face of yours a little bit." 
<laughs> Immediately, Eddie comes out and says, "It's salt Strix bodily." There's like a <laughs> there's like a bubble of makeup hanging on the end of Jim's nose. <laughs> no, and, it, and it should drip right at the end of the phrase. Like every, you're like yeah. makeup tips, you know, fix up that face, and then it it, it kind of it like something hatches on the end of his oh, nose. God. And he sniffs it back in. <laughs> oh, no. As he insults Strix, though, she's gonna she's gonna use her alter self spell to mirror mm-hmm. what he looks like and get really close to him and be oh. like, "Have you looked in the mirror lately?" <laughs> uh, Jim is horrified. I can do magic. To, immediately starts to cry and runs. <laughs> I go in for another. Open. I go in for another ecstatic congratulatory hand touch with her <laughs> after that performance. Happy <laughs> 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 I run to Omen and I say, "We got to get rid of this trash witch." <laughs> <laughs> She's like, "Excuse me, I'm a dumpster witch," and then turns herself back into herself. <laughs> All right, yeah, so, so, so it's like this. It's like children. I don't say it in my mouth, but it's just like fucking children. You know. <laughs> Stop it. So I think that Jim would like it. Are there, is there any team racing that happens so, out there or is it all singletons? There are, there are, there are various teams uh, and uh, some of them are always looking for jockeys. The one advantage to working for a team is that you'll be probably racing a dinosaur that has a reputation. Mm-hmm. And so you might get better odds. Whereas if you just sort of show up with your own dinosaur. Yeah, exactly. Um, you're going to be a long. You're going to be considered probably a long shot unless there's something utterly impressive about the dinosaur or the rider. Yeah, exactly. Well, I I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to like I assume that these and a these, triceratops yeah. costs five hundred gold. Yeah, that's a lot of gold, and I I don't I like him, but you know I don't I don't like him <laughs> like five hundred well, gold. The, just let me say, we buy because it's it's not it's not always the mount it's 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 the team behind it mm-hmm. we buy a little bit of a fixer upper triceratops right <laughs> and then and then after we win suddenly i mean just the stud fees is going to pay and once we win this suddenly it's it's worth its weight in probably copper but that's a lot of copper it's so much saying. copper and copper is going yep. up mm-hmm. uh, triceratops is an investment yeah, I mean, that's that's something that is going to pay out in the long run. Well, no, exactly. It's a big responsibility. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm going to clean up after it. I'm, and Jim's like, I will. Yeah. Uh huh. All right. Well, <laughs> God, I, I'm just like, all right. This is all of it. This is all of it. But I'm like, there's got to be some idols or something down here I can bring back. Like I'm just doing all the math, like up in my head, and I'm like, I'm hearing what Viari is saying, and it's like, yeah, I think. I think that we can. I think that we can go with a team, use our starter, use our starter uh, Triceratops. But if it can get the livery of the team, it will look like it's sort of on the up and up, right? Mm-hmm. But here's the other thing: because if uh, if we're planning on winning, yeah, oh yeah, we want we want to be the underdog. We want to come in with this bedraggledy Tricep, yeah, you know, and. And then it's like, oh, 20. I love the sound of 20 to one. That's like bells ringing for me. If, as a matter of fact, I'm going to scuff him up. We could let's get a <laughs> let's get a nice one. We'll just kind of, I don't know, we'll hide one of his legs or something before we go into the list. <laughs> All right. I like a situation like this. I, so I, I've seen this, this physical change on your part, Strix. See, can you make yourself, can you turn yourself into creatures of different kinds? I can turn into other people of the same size. So not creatures. I can turn others into creatures, but myself into other people. And that's not that a crazy big a monster. And I can breathe underwater, which is fine. Anybody can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Here. Trix is like so bad. She's like. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is what I like. So basically, the three of us are going to be the pit team that is going to get the, that is going to get Jim ready to go, and we're going to use every time he comes around on a lap and comes back into where we can get him, we're going to do everything we can to scam this thing uh, in the mo- like maximum subterfuge. Uh, and so the sorts of talents that you're talking about, I think would be very, very good. We also need part of this team, part of this team, Viari, I think is going to be finding the right type of bookie yeah. 
and building the yeah. building the back end support for this bet. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm on that. Yep. Exactly. So that's going to be we're gonna we're gonna execute that plan for tomorrow a.m. The rest of this day is probably best spent trying to make our contacts with the princes. Uh, should Jim maybe meet the dinosaur a little bit? Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And okay. in fact, you guys can handle that part of it. Um, I want I want to go get in line at this place and try to get in there sometime today. Okay. All right. So um, it sounds like Viari and Jim are going to kind of go off on their own to do to do some dinosaur Shopping. reconnoitering. Yeah. While say, Omen we, stands in line outside Golden Throne waiting for an audience. I wouldn't mind going to the audience as well. And also then we don't split the party. Mm. I was like, oh, we can we can come at least for the initial appointment. And then, you know, we could really, you know, we could really use your bargaining in terms of like setting up the dinosaur thing. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and I, I'm but, doing that partly for because I would like to go to the audience, but also partly so that Chris doesn't have to run two separate chains if, oh, if you don't want to yeah absolutely we'll just say that you're setting the preconditions for that stuff sort of working together the situation that we can all work on together ultimately okay. and viari was nice to strix so strix is just gonna shadow <laughs> like, you were nice to me also she's compelled to do whatever owen says so she's like avoiding <laughs> yeah him distinctly just be around <laughs> and she hates jim jim is mean jim is uh jim is sulking because you're not doing what he wants to do right now. <laughs> he thought he was going to race dinosaurs, and now we're going to some stupid place. <laughs> it's all part of it. This is a whole. This is a whole chain. It's like don't you know? Don't ruin this for yourself, son. You know. Don't. <laughs> God, I've said that. I've said that to my kids. <laughs> uh, as you make your way up. Uh, toward Golden Throne, um, you climb some stairs, you go up uh, some slanty streets, and then you cross this bridge over to this palace. Uh, it looks like a, a palace from another era. Um, it doesn't quite fit a lot of the design motifs of the rest of the city, um, but it has been taken over as the sort of central complex for meetings with the merchant lords. And there is a lineup that pours outside, and people are just sort of baking in the sun, and they've got fans and umbrellas and other things to help deal with it. And there are vendors going up and down the line, basically giving people food and water and such. Yeah, over in my region, I'm just going to just maintain thaumaturgy just to get a nice breeze going oh, great. Uh, over yeah. here for the line. It shouldn't, it shouldn't require too much of my concentration. Mm -hmm. At some point, Omen, a figure comes up to you and just asks you uh, what your business is and who you want to see. See, but we have two princes, ultimately, that we need to talk to. I, I feel like the first one... Wakonga is the one that we want to speak to first. Okay. Uh, but, but I mean, but the reality is that, I mean, so when, you, when you go into audience with them, do you go into audience with a council of them or individuals? Uh, sometimes they preside in council, but most often you can meet them one-on-one uh, -on -one okay. and they go through people as fast as they can. Exactly. Then the, each, like each visit is like you have one ticket. Yeah. Like, hmm. okay, then, then, then we'll, we'll go with Wakonga first. Okay. Uh, then as the as the hours pass and you get closer and closer to the entrance to this place. Actually, uh, when that guy shows up, does yeah. this seem like the sort of place where a a well-executed bribe would really grease this wheel? Or are we all on the up and up here? Um, make an insight check just to get a read on the situation. Seems a little formal, but money always talks. Uh, eh, only 13, 12, sorry. Uh, you're based on you sort of taking the temperature of the situation. You think a bribe could go a long way. Okay. Wow. Then yeah, after, uh, after Omen says, Oh, we're looking yeah. for this. And I kind of wander over and I'm like, uh, you know, my friend, he isn't really feeling very well. Um, I was wondering if there was something you could really do to, to help us out so I can, I can get him back home. And then I kind of, I, I also make the coin, Mm -hmm. obvious you know it's like could you do me this favor to help this poor sick man and then and for your trouble how does that go over uh this attendant seems well accustomed to uh, taking coin um in this manner okay and it sort of disappears <laughs> into his hand how much are you offering up because he sort of um, weighs it in his hand when he uh what's what's my what's my bead on this situation. With your 13, you're not exactly sure. You think anything less than maybe uh, five gold would be insulting? 
I, I'll happily give him 15. Oh, okay. Uh, in that case, uh, he takes you out of this line to the real line. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> and uh, uh, basically uh, uh, pushes you to the front of that line. So you're standing outside a set of uh, gold inlaid doors leading to the hall where Wakanga is basically waiting. Wow. Cool. Nicely done. Smooth. Strix is going to lick the doors. Yeah. And uh, the, the guy, the guy you sort of butt in in front of, he says, "How much did you pay?" Ten. <laughs> <laughs> he rolls his eyes. Strix and hopes he sees her licking the doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but it's like, but, it, but it's like the tongue is only so long, so you're you're kind of turning your head like, huh, huh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm going crazy on this thing. Yep. Uh, when you enter uh, Wakanga's audience chamber, uh, you see it's palatially decorated, and uh, he is uh, seated on some cushions behind a low table um, uh, on a dais. Uh, there is a young boy fanning him with palm frond, and uh, uh, he looks, he's an older uh, man. His, you can see uh, sort of cracks of, the cracks of age in his uh, withered visage. And his hair, uh, his curly black hair, has gone to mostly curly silver at this point. And he's got a pair of spectacles bridged on the end of his nose, and he's signing something, some pages, and then pushing them off to the corner, and then an attendant comes in and makes them disappear. When I see the documents, uh, just a thrill, just yes. <laughs> like an electric thrill goes up my spine, and I'm like, God, I wonder, how, I wonder what their official forms look like here. <laughs> Yeah, all of the lights here are magical, as though created with continual flame spells, and uh, uh, you can what, see. What color are they? Like uh, they're all kinds of colors: pink, blue, <gasps> green, yellow. <gasps> yep. All right. Um. So yeah, let, let me know when it's my turn to come up. Yep. Uh, you can see that behind this seated man, floating in the air, is a sword. Ooh. It just hangs in the air, like, like a dance, sword like, of like a dancing like, sword, like, like a, a dancing sword. Um, and it's just, you know, a little bit behind him, almost hanging, not directly over his head, like the sort of Damocles, but yeah. there's, there's a definite threatening way to, in, that the sword is presenting itself. I like it. Do I recognize the spell? Um, you don't think it's a spell, Jim, based on your experience, you think it might be an animated flying yeah. sword yeah, construct artifact, yeah. or a dance uh, or an actual dancing sword magic item. Okay. No. Very cool. Yeah. I take, I take it in. Like, I like that. I, I, I think I can see a, a future where I just sit and then all the adventure comes to me. Yeah. And I, <laughs> Welcome, and I Omen Drawn of Acquisitions, Inc. Yeah. Oh, it's already. It's already oh, okay. Yes. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> snap out of his daydream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like. Uh, or do you prefer Acquisitions Incorporated? Uh, either is fine. They're, um, they're both copyright, so uh, <laughs> however you want to do it. And uh, depending on which gift shop you go to, um, you know, we have stationery with either. So it's either way is fine. He says, I could use some decent parchment. Hmm. Well, uh, next, next time we come down, I'll make sure our holds, I'll make sure that there's, they're bulging. Uh, what with, can I do for you, my young man? Well, uh, listen, uh, I met a half dragon uh, recently who Zindar. suggested, uh, oh, I know, it's written down here. He's being purposefully okay. ambiguous, like there's a bunch okay. of fucking half dragons. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> says, I met a half dragon recently um, who said that you might be able to. He'll hold out a handful of nuts and say, pistachio. Yes. Jibble takes some. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Strix no, it's like, is going to get really excited and just crawl and be like, ah! <laughs> no, no, no. It's just, but it starts out because he's, he's, he's sort of established. He's just like, you know, obviously, you know, we met someone who may be in your circle. And then it's like, oh, nuts. Oh, yes. Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow! These are what are yep. these? What yep. are these? I know, right? <laughs> and so, he, he says, "A mouthful of nuts." He's basically he has pressed a pistachio paste, you know, several tablespoons of oh, it God. over yeah. in his left cheek with his tongue, and he says, "Strix is eating the shells." By the yeah, way, oh yeah, absolutely, <laughs> of course. But but this is like the most efficient way for us to handle this. There's just this pile of shells, and you're the one who's winning and, here. And Jim, you're looking at it, and it's like they left the shell on. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this sucks. This nut sucks. Here, so, but it's essentially, essentially, I say, you know, we were led to believe that there is a illness that ails this port, and, you know, 
I have a, a great friend who suffers from this ailment also, and we, we aren't certain it has a name yet. He says, your law is only partially correct. This is a worldwide phenomenon. That would explain, that would explain a lot. This half-dragon that we met suggested there were people even in this town who yes. were suffering beneath this malady. He says, but this is only the second case that I have personally seen. Say, what are you? Oh, I, I don't have it. He's not talking about me. Strix is like, he definitely has it. <laughs> also, I used to have it, but I got better. And she's like, just t- picking the shells off the ground. And her folks when you say that, he, he like, looks at you and he says, knees, like, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had this curse and you got better. How? Well, it's a long story. Our paladin sacrificed herself. He, says, uh, he holds up his hand. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no. He says, <laughs> why don't you tell me the story tonight over dinner at my villa? Dinner? That sounds so nice. She just looks back like to the rest us? of the she yeah, looks back to it, the rest of the group like, I'm scared. Yeah, is it, <laughs> I, I, I'm looking over her and then I'm looking at him and I'm like, is that who who for for dinner? Who who all? Who can go? <laughs> oh, all of you can oh, are welcome. Okay, I, listen, oh, I don't God. I, I, yeah, 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 and it's just like I, I give Strix the thumbs up like, all right, dodged a bullet here, kid. <laughs> Strix is like, hey. yeah, exactly. So, um, I, I see it, we can we can speak on this. We topic. have much to discuss. This is not a place for long conversations. Yeah, There's yeah. a lineup behind you. Okay, well, they're are they dealing with a global death curse or like? <laughs> I mean, it's a priority thing, I think. And then, it's and then, a matter and of and pride I, for me that I speak to all who come before me. Not all the merchant princes can say the same. I catch the sword like out of the corner of my eye. I'm like. Yeah, well, all right, well, that's great, and um, I guess we'll go to your house. If you, I mean, we're we're at the house of repose. I don't know if if you want to come to our place. Or... I will send someone I, to fetch you. I kind of step in front and I say, "Thank you so much for your t- <laughs> the gift of your time. Uh, we'll be very pleased to meet you, and I will gather the information from your v- trusted servants." Yes, he says. I look forward to hearing more about what you've learned and how you, young lady, have managed to shed this horrible curse. She's a liar. She never had it. <laughs> All she does is lie and not cast magic. And 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 Viari is like backing out of the room, kind of like <laughs> sweeping them, sweeping them. It's like it's yes. like this is not how you do this. I'm trying to get one more. I'm trying to get one more handful of nuts. I'm like pointing at my empty oh my palm God. and then like into the. I was like just like. <laughs> It's like I make I'm like a one, and then I'm like I point at the palm, and then I point at the craw. It's like one palm mouth. I will, One. Get, I will buy you some nuts. We, we will go home right through the market. I will get you some nuts. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. So I. 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 I yield. I yield okay. to Viari. <laughs> <laughs> Strix is going to pick up the rest of the shells, and as Jib is insulting her, she's going yeah. to go down on the ground while she's in the shells and, and light the tip of his robe on fire. <gasps> <gasps> okay. <laughs> So Jim, after after about two minutes, you you smell a smell, just a something burning, you know. Uh, yeah. As soon as I notice the flame, I I look down and I I snap my fingers and snuff it out, <laughs> and I I look at her, and I say, "You set my robe on fire." That Seriously? wasn't me. Well, apparently I'm a liar. I'm just a big liar. It's a big I will old... set your entire body on fire. <laughs> Do it. Do it. I dare you. No, 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 no. Hey, nope. Nope. who wants, nope. who, who wants nope. nuts? Nope. Who wants nuts going through the market? Huh? Look at this want, spiny, I, weird fucking fruit here. I want, Strix will so sad, go, I want nuts. Yeah. Yeah. So I lean into Omen and I go, I'm going to roast this pervert. <laughs> so you're not, you're not going to roast this pervert. I want to, I want to communicate something very important to you. I don't even think she cares about fire. I don't think that she knows how to burn. Do you understand me? She is a hell person. I will I will polymorph her into an ant and step on her. I want you to not do that. <laughs> and instead, I want you to do something else that isn't Jim, that. I bet you could invent a whole new kind of fire that would burn things that don't normally burn, right? Wouldn't that be? That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Well, you guys talking about fire. killing me? No, I want <laughs> yes. Jim. Jim, yes. Jim. No, 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 Jim. No. He said I could do it. That's not what I said. <laughs> Jim, what I want you to do is I want you to think very hard about math just for a little while. Just think really hard about it. 
and let that be what you're doing. Just think about how numbers are and how weird. I'm confused. You, just think about some numbers for a while and some letters. Just this is some crazy stuff. How did we even come up with this? Jim's eyes just <laughs> gloss over. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's not. He won't kill you. And I have to be honest with you, Strix. If he did, I could bring you back from the dead. Just FYI. I don't think you can. Well, here in about a week, I will be able to do it. So I'll make sure that I'll make sure you stay fresh. Strix knows about about this, right? About the curse. Oh, yeah, better yeah, than anybody. You, yes. But, yeah. You, so you know that the de- currently, while the curse is in effect, the dead cannot be brought back. Right, so she's going to be. Whoa, saying, have I? Tell, have I? Oh, heard, I don't think I knew that. Have I heard that little? Nope. This is gem? just new news that comes to you as Strix is walking with you through the 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 city. And she says it really nonchalantly, like yeah. just like. Yeah, as, so, as you're okay. walking through the entrance of Kaya's house of repose, she just throws away this line. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, so it actually isn't going to work. Like, it's not going to work at all. It's just until this curse is done. Yeah, Strix. <laughs> Strix, listen to me. So we're going to deal with this soulmonger. It's going to take. A couple days, we're gonna go out into the jungle. We're gonna find the soul monger. I'm gonna step on it. Okay, shh, shh, a shh, couple shh, shh, days back in, in the room. <laughs> yeah, this is this is in the room talk. Yeah, yeah. This is not not common room talk. Yeah, yeah. And then I say, yeah, and and then after that, it'll be fine if Jim kills you. <laughs> <laughs> it'll let, it'll get it out of his system. Great. You know. <laughs> That's great. I'm so glad that you have an infernal contract on me. Just yep. keep rattling your bone box about how everything's great. I'm just going to go back. I'm just going to go and hide. And just leave me alone. And she just like mumbles off and just like crunches pistachio shells. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what you hear. <laughs> she also has her little uh, familiar, which is technically a pet, but stinky, the cranium rat who is like looking at you from behind her as she walks away. Oh, that's really? Gross. Yeah, it's a rat that looks like part of its skull was peeled back to re- reveal its brain. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm I am semi familiar with this familiar. Uh, yeah. So w- once we're posted up, I mean, we're basically just gonna like freshen to the extent it's mm-hmm. possible in this humidity, yep. um, and prepare for uh, uh, Wakanga's envoys. Great. Uh, you all change, clean yourself up, except for Strix, of course. <laughs> yes, uh, of course. Yes, and then a an attendant uh, from the Wakanga Villa will uh, show up looking for you uh, when somebody uh, the innkeeper can point you out and you can accompany that person back to the merchant prince's home. The villa is a spectacular affair, um, decorated, painted outer walls, uh, overgrown with vines. There are great arcades and open garden gardens open to the sky within the walls of the villa. Do they have Hydra Thunder or Mortal Kombat in these arcades? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, sadly mm. no. So they are Redemption lacking. Counter. They are a little. <laughs> they are a little backward uh, here. Sucks. Okay. When you are brought into Wakanga's place, you see his villa is lit with more continual light spells, and there's soft music, which J- uh, Jim and Strix you reckon is created by magic kind of playing throughout. Uh, You see there are more of those swords uh, kind of floating around. Um, Sometimes they just kind of drift past you, uh, like they're being carried by invisible guards. And uh, as the the butler ushers you through, he sort of gestures, he warns you not to step on certain rugs because they will Uh. attack you. Ah. (laughs) What? Um, As you make your way through. Strix and will just apologize to all the inanimate objects. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry, 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 so sorry, sorry. <laughs> when you come out into the central, uh, one of the gardens uh, inside uh, this place, a uh, young woman uh, comes over to you, Jim, and hands <gasps> you what looks like a very thin, well-made porcelain mask. Of like a, do I know what it's of? Like I'm, uh, uh, it looks like it's an animal. It, it, it or... looks like a, your, uh, a mask that you would, like a Harlequin mask that you would put on oh, your face. Okay. It's obviously designed for a human face. Masquerade. And uh, she says, the- uh, uh, Prince Wakanga offers you this gift, a magical item given to him by a, uh, a friend long ago. It will uh, hide any imperfections. Why give it to me? He no obviously <laughs> knows that you are a great connoisseur of 
magical artifacts, uh, it would be very rude to refuse or not to use it during this dinner. Ah, you're probably right. Can I make yes. a, a check on it to make Absolutely. sure it's not like cursed <laughs> Yeah, like it won't eat like your that. face off. Like, I'm not Absolutely. just going to put on a weird mask. Uh, and she says, it will enhance your natural beauty. Okay, I got a 16. Okay, oh. uh, you believe that the mask is magical, that it has uh, properties of illusory, of an illusory nature. Well, I mean, if it's going to enhance my natural beauty, that's different. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I put it on. Jim puts it on. Okay. Uh, when you do, the re- it sort of dissolves into yeah. your face. So you can't okay. feel it. Oh. It doesn't feel like you're wearing anything. Um, but then uh, from that point on, the rest of you can see that Jim looks as handsome as he ever has. As Jimmy, that classic but nose. And and actually, uh, even even the sort of the the welts and other things that have appeared elsewhere on his body, not just on his face, seem to fade away. But I don't feel any better. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, while we were kicking around the the place, I was hoping to find uh, to like do a little reconnoitering about uh, about this guy. He's a prince. Everybody's got to know about him. Yeah. I just want to figure out like what his steez is very briefly specifically so that we can bring a uh, a host gift ah, okay. of s- something that he would appreciate like this okay. is this is the game you know uh, you know he obviously he's one of the big high mucky mucks it does not hurt to to make that kind of a nice thing right uh yeah so you're able to glean that he is the only arcane spellcaster among the merchant princes of port nianzaru one of the oldest of the princes and He's something of a dandy uh, whose reputation, oh. according, to rep- according to what people say, is easily seduced by uh, brains and smart people. And uh, he's got a great respect for, for thoughtful, uh, scholarly types. Uh, he deals in knowledge, information, lost lore, potions, and scrolls. Right. So this one I, I bring up to, to Jerry and Mike. And I'm like, I'm like, we should really bring something. Here's what I found out. I can I can go out into the market and try to drum something up real quick, but I need to know what my budget is. Um, and it would it would just be you know he, here's the game. I'm guessing this guy is going to play. It's like he it's largesse. He's a fucking prince. So if we bring something for him, he can't be one upped, and he's going to help us disproportionately. You know. Oh, he'll have to plus, overdo it. Yeah. Yeah, While this is going on, that uh, female attendant brought you a mask, holds up a, a gilded mirror uh, so that you can see, Jim, your, that you look as, <gasps> as splendid as you <gasps> ever had. That, that, that wig kind of <laughs> that wig kind of looks a bit ridiculous on you now, though. Yeah, I, t- I tear the wig off <laughs> to reveal my luxurious yes. hair. And I'm, I'm grabbing the mirror now. I take it from yeah. her. I'm just staring at it. I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. It's like James Blunt, except it's I'm beautiful. Yeah. You're holding it kind of up. You're holding the mirror up at the angle. Yeah, I got the selfie angle going. Yeah. So, Omen, are you going to give uh, Riari some, some spending money so you can this, buy something? I, I've done nothing but spend money. <laughs> <laughs> it's strict Listen. here this whole this whole yeah. uh, oh yeah the, present thing um, okay, she's just standing there just like looking and she pulls out a, I think she has a chimera horn mm-hmm. and she's just like is this good well they like this it's from a monster I go and I, I look at I look at Jim and I point at that I'm like is that cool for potions and stuff I mean I would would I recognize it as like yeah, you can a, make an a arcana mat check a mat yeah yep. Uh, 13 plus 8. Yeah, you believe that uh, Chimera Horn can be used to make all sorts of transformational potions and things. Oh, that is a gift. Yeah, I don't I don't know how this dumpster witch <laughs> got her hands <laughs> on such a powerful magical uh, component. We killed but, it. Yeah, it would, I doubt that, Liar, <laughs> but it would make a fantastic gift uh, for this prince. It's a thoughtful gift. Listen, and the only reason that you were even like in my sights to begin with was that I was a little fucked up. But now that I'm back to like gorgeous Jim, you're not even in his league. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be cool before. Strix is just like <laughs> He was trying to compensate for his ugliness noise. with personality. Yeah, now it's yeah just... he was. <laughs> exactly. So I, I see this horn. I'm like, yeah, that looks magical AF. Let's uh Let's just let's just continue on or, or, or wait for the right. next sort of uh, conclave to come yes. pick us up. 
You are brought into the dining hall in Wakanga's villa, and there you can see already servants working feverishly to lay out um, dishes and things. Uh, no sign of your host, but you are encouraged to sit down and partake of some of the dates and fruits and uh, other good candied goods that have been laid out. Candied <laughs> goods. Candy. Yeah. I don't sit by Jim. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> as far away as you can. Yeah. On the other side yeah, of the table. Is, yeah. There are large paintings on the wall, you. by the way, that depict uh, sp- uh, spell casting and spell dueling wizards engaged in all manner of spell craft and uh, c- causing magical effects. One of the ones behind you, Jim, is a big picture of a wizard casting a what appears to be a prismatic spray spell at uh, some wow. sort of giant stone colossus. So do, are these Chulton paintings? Uh, not all of them, no. Some of them look like that they were they were rendered, you know, far and wide. Hmm. Are any of them of Jim? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a very good question. <laughs> um, yeah, you you see a small one over, yeah, <laughs> in uh, uh, over this table that has a vase of exotic flowers on it. And yeah, the wizard there does seem to bear a striking resemblance to Jim Dark Magic, and is actually surrounded by a cloud, a, a cloud of doves. So Jim walks over to that painting, and, and in a very loud voice, <laughs> he says, like, "I can't help but notice this painting of me. Um, I would be happy to autograph it for you <laughs> while I'm here." Actually, uh, at that I, point I, in time, Wakanga has sort of drifted into the room. He's wearing this sort of golden gown or robe, uh, very wizardly of him. Uh, he's removed his spectacles and he's got a sort of a fez-like hat on his head. Yeah. And he says, ah, you're him. I am, yeah. And I'm like, I'm like Pat at an airport. I'm just signing everything that's got my name on it. <laughs> like, Jim. <laughs> There's something that looks kind of like Jim. It's like Jim adjacent. Like it's not yeah. the right robe, but it's like the hair is sort of the same. That. Yeah, it's just like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, as he sits down around the table and dines with you, you, you find out right away that Wakango Otamu, despite his station, has, there's no pretense about the man. He is, he is direct. He is honest. He's friendly. He's cordial. Uh, he doesn't speak to you as a lesser, but as an equal. Hmm. Oh, wow. Wow. That's nice. Pick the right one to visit. A wizard of the people. Yeah. And he, he says, uh, if you express any surprise in that whatsoever, he, he says that uh, he believes it is right to treat your guests higher than uh, yourself. Hmm. So he is. Oh, when I'm the guest, you're right. Yeah. So he is probably very interested in what Strix has to say, is my guess. Yes. Probably not. Yes. Probably not too much, though. <laughs> probably more interested in Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see any paintings of Strix. He is torn. So. Yes. He is definitely torn between getting useful information out of Strix and just understanding where this phenomenal wizard Jim Dark Magic came from. Strix Every time point. I. I see that his attention seems to be drifting towards Strix. I produce another set of doves. <laughs> oh my God. But after so the doves. Minutes, like the it's doves just start <laughs> falling out of the air, just raining. He can't breathe for all of the down in the air. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Wakanga confides in you that he's been doing research and collecting research on the curse recently because he does have a wizard friend of his who was raised from the dead some years ago and is currently suffering under its curse. And uh, for her sake, uh, he is trying his best to find a lead. What he suggests, based on his research, is that you have a brief, hopefully productive, fruitful conversation with Grandfather Zetembe. He is the high priest of the Temple of Savras here in Port Nyanzaru. Uh, Savras is a god of wizards and prophecy and uh, second sight. That sounds good. Does he, does Jerry bring up Soulmonger? Oh, uh, uh, pro- just, right now I'm just question. right now I'm just listening to the story because I know that Strix is going to have like some specifics about. I mean, it may it may be that the solution that the Waffle Crew came up with can't be universalized. Mm-hmm. Right. You know right. what I mean. So right right now I'm not playing any cards that I don't have uh, to. Grand, our, our, um, Wakanga thinks that a powerful lich may somehow be involved, and the reason he thinks that is because uh, sightings in Chult of Red-robed wizards with strange tattoos. Thayans? suggest Thayans. Yeah, and Strix uh, is like, oh, uh, it's a, a, Sar- a Sararak, Askrak, a Sararak. That's the lich's name. Wakanga sort of corrects you and says <laughs> that Thay 
and the, uh, the red wizards of Thay pay deference to an uh, archlich named Zastam. That's the name that he heard. He oh. is not familiar with this Asrak. Uh, yeah, crazy <laughs> planer. Uh, so the sword that talks to my friend summons this lady who tried to buy me as a slave, <laughs> and she told me that that was the lich's name. Hmm. And the sword Asirak. talks to him. Fiari is enraptured by her storytelling. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, he's like, this is everything wrong. This, you know, it's like, you know, oh, but, but so wonderful. This is like, <laughs> it's like an endless, gorgeous fireworks in a train wreck every yeah. time you start to tell a story. <laughs> and you can't look away because it's just so horrific. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but she keeps dropping science. A Sararak? Nope. I mean, I knew about the Thaeans, and I know about Zastam, but I did not... I, I, I say a Sararak? A I think Sararak. that's how you say it. I mean, I don't know. That's, but that's his name for sure. I don't know why this this Akataloth won't... I mean, she could just be lying. I don't think she's lying. There's some there's some shady, real shady stuff going on there. Actually, I, I've got... Spill a glass of wine on her. <laughs> 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 On purpose, I like I knock it over. Very Which, obviously, it spills all over you. It's really yeah. hard I given that you're sitting on this. <laughs> she doesn't place. notice at all. Yeah. Doesn't I notice. Don't notice. I'm, I, I'm I filthy. magically do it. <laughs> so she just like she just do it, and she's just like just like rings it into her mouth from her room. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, and I, just keeps talking. But it'd be like, how many times will Jim do it? Like he's like, well, maybe she didn't notice. You can't just do it again. You can just dump the bottle on me. Hold the canter. Yeah. She's disgusting. Look at her. Can't even even keep her wine in a glass. So, so yeah. So when it when it so uh, uh, at these antics, um, I try I try to get uh, Wakanga's attention, and I say we consulted an oracle. I believe we are. I believe that we have earned a certain amount of trust from each other. I'm not going to ask you to cross swords for me, but we both have someone we care about that is suffering from this. And it, I don't know who Owen's talking about. And it, <laughs> it, may be that, it may be that we can come to some kind of a solution. I am here to solve this problem, uh, as we have solved so many before. The hand of our organization has been there any time Wizards of the Coast has delivered one of their seasonal products. <laughs> and, uh, I'm canonical in one of the books. So I'm also a master Lord of Waterdeep. What more no, do you I want? don't say any of that stuff. Uh, what, what I say is that, is that we have heard of um, a device or a personage called the soul monger. And it, perhaps it's associated with this Acerarach. Perhaps they are bound in some, some nefarious purpose. But our understanding is that this soul monger, I mean, my translation would be some kind of trader of souls, some kind of a soul market. Our, our understanding is that, is that this is binding souls, uh, and that is what has caused this malady to come about. Since this is the first time I've heard any of these names come up in game Mm -hmm. do i know i've kind of like i spend all my time in bars and i hear the stories have i ever run into it's like oh shit i've heard about that yeah he does this or anything like that nope okay nope this is weird stuff this is this is beyond the pale yeah this is well beyond the pale this is new shit uh, but uh, at least for the time being, uh, Wakanga, who is an old man, uh, gets a little bit exhausted. Um, just, uh, but uh, suggests that you spend the night here in comfortable quarters rather than go back to your tiny little hovel of a hostel. Sure. Deal. Absolutely. Deal. All right. Yep. And you're free to go where you please. Just uh, watch what rugs you step on. And then he'll retire for the night um, because he's sort of weary and let you guys just sort of either wander or settle into your luxurious palatial sleeping quarters. Hooty hoo. Um, I will, if there's uh, like an opportunity for it, like once I realize he's not playing courtly games, I actually, I'm like, I'm like, oh shit. You know, like genuinely surprised. But uh, I'll say... I'll, if if it gets a little relaxed before he turns in, I will say, you know, I, I've heard that you, you know, have a certain interest in magical curiosities. I said, several months ago, we encountered a golem 
um, that was covered in these crystals. And, you know, I describe it briefly because I actually have the gems from that golem. Mm. Um, oh, from like, the Zagranezer estate. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, and I, I actually collected them and I'm like, you know, for me, these are mostly a, a curiosity, uh, but it strikes me that they might be of genuine interest or use to a person like yourself. Uh, you know, Hold on. He, is, he is very Mary. flattered and will take them. And uh, yeah. when he does, he pulls uh, from underneath his robe and around his neck a small uh, little, it looks like a pendant, but the pendant is shaped like a tiny little chest. And he puts that down on the table, utters a command word, and an identical chest to that one, but life-size, like full-sized chest, appears about five feet away on the floor. Oh, and he uh, yeah, removes a, a key. He removes a key. <laughs> really awesome. He removes a key from the pocket of his robe, a full-size key, and puts it into the full-sized replica of the tiny pendant chest. And when the lid pops open. He sort of tries to hide its contents from you, but he reaches in and he pulls out what looks like a spell book and sets it down on uh, the table. Magic. And he says... Jim sidles up next to him. What are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> and Strix is probably on his other side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Just going... Uh, he says, this is a wizard's journal that was recovered from the jungle years ago. There's no sign of whatever fate befell the wizard. Who knows? Uh probably long now gone from this world, but it does contain secrets and lost lore of this place we call Chult and might be of use to you. I offer it to you as a gift for the gift you have given to me. I put my hands on it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Strix has her hands on it too. I, we have to roll. <laughs> I think it's only a fair if you guys have a roll here. off. Okay. Uh, to see as, as they struggle, I try to like distract his attention <laughs> away from them. Big. He I, shakes. Like, he shakes his hand and, and just sort of pats you on the shoulder, VR, and he says, "I am well aware of the personalities of wizards." <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a night. I rolled. Let a them 19. have their fun. I got a fourteen, and okay. Strix is like, "I'm not Jim a wizard." Tears it away from Strix's grasp. <laughs> Get your filthy hands off of me. <laughs> I could imagine like the absolutely like brittle <laughs> smile on Viari's face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's thin, man. It's thin. Yeah. It's like a vial. It's just, there's nothing yes. to it. So right. she's just tired of being bullied, so she just starts crying. <laughs> <laughs> it's just getting worse and worse. All right. Finally, finally, the four of you are kind of left alone. You do see occasionally when you walk into a room, there's like a servant standing in a corner waiting to be commanded to do something. But they're just, they might as well be statues unless you actually talk to them. Can I detect any of these weird rugs? Like, do I know what they're talking about? Uh, yeah, you can see that very cleverly sort of woven into the, their patterns are sort of these suggestions of mouths. And uh, once you sort of see that Hate pattern, it. Hate it. it's, uh, it's easy to tell the ones that are designed to wrap around you and basically gnaw on you. I pretend to trip and I bump into Strix and try to <laughs> knock her into one of these rugs. Oh, All right. That's so uh, mean. I'm Strix, crying. Strix, just make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, oh, great. I got a two. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, she stumbles onto a rug, and suddenly the rug's just like <laughs> up around so her. Clumsy. And no. Now, like, now like, she's like, just like, being like crushed and suffocated and chewed on by this rug. No, like a cat. She's clumsy. No, we should Like drop a her. cat or a dog. I'm like, Jim, no. <laughs> no, I tripped, and I, I, I'm just I'm grabbing this, I'm grabbing this rug, like the base of this rug, and I'm lifting it up and swinging, like when you're playing with a child, like you're swinging them around. <laughs> yeah, like I'm just trying to swing her, like a like a human centrifuge. Uh, I'm trying you to swing her like, out of this. Yeah, you know, just inside the. <laughs> <laughs> she can't get out of a rug. No, I turn into a cloud. Okay. Suddenly the rug, as you're spinning it around, it becomes much lighter and kind of deflates, and this gas seeps out. Gross. Um, <laughs> I throw this, it. I, this greenish-yellow it. Greenish gas. Yeah. Stinks. I, I throw it over. The, I throw the thing over the veranda. It's just okay. Like, <laughs> the whole rug just goes woof out the, out the veranda window. And I say, Jim. What? They told us to watch out for rugs. I don't know what her problem is. <laughs> <laughs> no one else has stepped in one of these rugs. Jim, I have other things to do. Well, hopefully we can keep her on a short leash. You're the one with the contract. I don't know. She seems like a real problem. 
All right, I'm just I, gonna stay a cloud. Yeah, exactly. I, <laughs> I just, I just try to vaguely strict shaped cloud. Yeah, 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 just listening. I, I, I just try to intervene myself physically between these two squabblers whenever possible. Okay. I will avail myself of like the hospitality of the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm kind of curious. I mean, this guy has to have an art gallery. He mm-hmm. has to have like a beautiful library. And you yeah, know, when you not- step into his library, you just weep. Um, yeah. It's yeah. it's a beautiful thing. Everything but, but, is behind these gorgeous glass Strix cases in this sort of bronze colored wood. Yeah. <laughs> Strix just Strix is it's like raining out of the main, clouds. It is. Mains. The cloud is raining. Yeah, the cloud yeah. is just raining. <laughs> it's leaving a puddle wherever it goes. Yeah, and you have, and, you know, and here, here, this is his place is basically your place while you're here, so you can avail yourself of anything and any any one. Well, yeah, I'm going. I am going yeah. right to the T section um, yep. of it. I mean, I, I have to find the ones that are in common or were perhaps written by wizards from my neck of the woods. Mm. But I'm specifically looking at, looking at tombs, uh, relics, the deep places, like the haunted ass deep places. Um, yep. Just to, just to try to get a heads up on um, on the types of situations we're going out there because I don't think this soulmonger is like like five feet out. It's like oh here's the soulmonger, you know. Like I want to scan the book that I've got too. I find like a big leather chair to plop down. Yeah, in. Yeah, you all kind of uh, find find various stuff. I'd like everyone. Uh, I'm assuming you're going to spend some time basically in this library this just browsing. Uh, so so yeah. everybody roll too. everybody roll percentiles. Oh, percentile ooh. dice. See what you learn as you. Thank you, Chris. Just gonna look for look for books on demonic contracts. <laughs> uh. Oh, one hundred! Holy Whoa. shit! Really? I will take a picture of it if you want. <laughs> Please do that, but not because I don't believe you. Like that's <laughs> I, awesome. Like you know yeah. as well as I do, man. You used to do percentiles all the time. This never happens. Like it mm-hmm. it happens a couple times in your career. Yep. Uh, Jerry, or yeah, what's your role? Uh, I have a. Altman. 70%. 70. Jim? 10%. 10. Strix? <laughs> 30%. Wow, you all rolled like number and then zero? Yeah. I did. Holy yeah. crap. It's That's really, bizarre. really weird. And for a while, I had to look at the 70 and be like, what is the seven? Is it 700? Is it? All right. VR, <laughs> VR, you found this tomb, uh, this tome that's all about a great god named Uptau. And Uptau is a central figure in Chalton mythos. <laughs> He is a god who actually lived among the people here for thousands of years and is basically the father of Chult. Uh, the dinosaurs of Chult are known as Ubtau's children. And uh, he did not like living on higher planes. He wanted to be with his, his worshipers. But over time, the Chultans became so warlike amongst each other that he was like the father of bad children. Um, and was tired of mediating on their behalf and settling all their disputes and their petty, petty squabbles. Right. I've been there. And so in the past couple hundred years, he basically left Chult, abandoned them, and left the Chultans to solve their problems for themselves. And one of the things you learn about him is that he loved mazes. And there's a long there's a long held belief in Chult among sages that if you happen upon a maze of any kind in Chult, trace a path through it and you will earn Ubtau's favor by doing so. Hmm. Oh, Intriguing. Cool. Yeah. Uh, the other thing you know you learn after reading this tomb is tome is that one of the reasons why Ubtau came to Chult was because there is rumors of a great portal to the underworld under the peaks of flame, which is a volcanic chain in Chult. Oh. And beyond this portal lies an entity, an elder evil known as Dendar the Night Serpent, who threatens to boil forth, fly up, and devour the sun should she ever escape. And it was Ubtau's charter to protect Chult and the world should she be set free. And Dendar the Night Serpent is a terrible god of the serpent people known as the Uwanti. Right, right, right. And I know about the... Um... Because we have we have Dendar the Night Serpent, the constellation, even in our sky. Yes, yes, um, a dark and foreboding entity to which Ubtau had pledged to defend the world. With him gone, that's a little hard to do. Mm. Yeah. Um, is the priest we're going to go to talk to? He, is he a priest of Ubtau? I forget. Now he's a priest of Savras, a god Savras. of prophecy. Okay. 
Um, what I do is I read all this and I do tell everyone, mm -hmm. but I wait until it's really relevant and I mention it in a very offhand way as if, well, everybody <laughs> knows this, right? Of course. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, you, Omen Drawn. Yes. Uh, since you're looking for uh, tombs and things, you find a book. Tombs and things a... would be a great name for a shop. Tombs and things, yeah. <laughs> tombs and things. You find a book Cinemal. that describes a ruined city, uh, a legendary place that lies up the river Taff, past a place called Cahakla Gorge. Supposedly, uh, very, very few people have ever gone beyond the gorge into the city um, in recent memory. And uh, those who have made it out have always sort of kept their secrets of what they learned there very close to them. But this book talks about um, or, or says as fact that the ruins of this city, which are called Oralunga, are guarded by a Naga who is, by all accounts, both wise and generous. And this Naga is said to be an oracle. Ah, uh, so Oralunga village... It's some, so it's some kind of guardian naga, probably? Yeah, it's a guardian naga presiding over the ruins of an ancient uh, seat of power. And it's a recogn it's recognized just in sort of like a – delivered to us in a factual yeah, manner that that's this – That's right. And it talks, about, it talks about things in Oralunga like there, there's a certain type of blue flower that grows there that is said to have mystical properties. It's also known to be or believed to be a haven for elemental spirits, um, benign yeah, elemental yeah, spirits. Yeah, yeah. Good. Thank you for the uh, clarification. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, that's what you're able to get right away, um, Jim. With your role on my special book, yeah, yeah, you find a book that talks about a different city in the jungle, one built long ago by minotaurs. Hmm. Uh, a minotaur. City. Yeah, essentially a, a group of a, a, a kingdom of Chultons and a kingdom of minotaurs basically came together to live a peaceful coexistence in this city known as Omu. Okay. And uh, uh, this, this city was known to wage bloody wars against its neighbors and uh, became quite terrifying uh, a place. Um, but its kings and queens were very protective of their own people and sort of attained this almost sort of uh, divine or status among their people. Uh, for being the protectors. Yeah. But yes, they were very, very brutal. Um, the city itself was kind of like a maze or uh, designed that way mm. uh, by the Minotaurs. Well, I was going to say, if we're talking about Minotaurs, is this our, is this our maze opportunity? Mm -hmm. Yep. And they also worshipped Ubtau, but they were some of the most problematic of Ubtau's children uh, because of their warlike nature. The Omuans were very brutal people. But that might be a good way, that might be a good way to lead off and get that yep. favor Speaking, we can get to this place. Get and uh, to Omu, one of, one of the, the figures that's described in Omu and lore is considered to be the most beautiful woman who has ever walked on the face of Chult. Her name is Queen Zalcore. So magnificent right, was she <laughs> that Queen Zalcore's generals who worshipped her built her a garden palace outside of Omu, a place where she could retire to and be alone with her thoughts called Nangalore. Ooh. Yes. Okay. This garden palace is where she retreated to after she abandoned the city. We should probably head there first. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And then Strix, uh, with your role, uh, you find a book on uh, that talks about, well, interesting, you find a book on yet another <laughs> Chalton city called Mesro, oh. which was uh, basically a paradise, a utopia in the heart of the jungle. That, um, nice. that was protected by a group of ageless, undead, possibly paladins called the Barai, or the Barai. Oh. And one of these Barai rebelled, or basically was exiled from the city and came back with an undead army to conquer it. But he was defeated and driven off into the jungle. And this warlord is kind of a Chultan, now boogeyman, named Raz Nisi. Yeah, I'll say I'll just so, walk I'll that. tell everyone. There's a boogeyman. Yeah. His name is Roz Nisi. It sounds bad. Don't While sleep. you are reading in the library, I'd like you all to make perception checks. Sleeping bad. Oh, crap. 19, Mr. Oh, Perkins. Ooh. Well done. 11. 11. 13. Strix? Uh, six. Okay, Omen, uh, while this is going on and you're, you're trading some information about what you're finding, maybe at this particular point in time, Viari is 
waxing obtusely about uh, something to do with oob tower mazes. Uh, you notice out of the corner of your eye that the four of you are not alone, that assassins or thieves have crept into this library and are lurking in the shadows. Uh, and they just, they recognize, Omen, that you have spotted them. Yeah. You can see that they have uh, wavy daggers um, that they're armed with. And uh, they're, they're all dressed in black. And when they see that you see them, their attempt to remain hidden turns in their, all their postures become sort of more threatening. Hostile postures, you would say. Yes. Yes. And there are four of them. Uh, what would you like to do in this moment um, while you're not surprised? Yeah, yeah. I, I say, I say. Oh, thank you for thank you for coming. We it was actually our decanters are empty. Uh, if you could please uh, refill them, and if you could bring more of those star shaped fruits. <laughs> Jim Jim turns around. Oh yeah, fruits. Bring the fruits. Yeah, Jim. When you turn around, you see that these do not appear to be the servants of the villa, <laughs> but rather dark clad assassins. And uh, the other thing you guys are able to notice as they sort of step out of the shadows is that while they appear to be human, they each have in their own way something that betrays their true serpentine nature. Oh, uh, one of them has serpent-like eyes. Another one, you can see uh, parts of her skin has scaly patterns on it. Uh, reptilians. Yes, reptilian <laughs> humans, so it would seem. Uh, so have these infiltrated as we read? Yes. As you okay. were t as you were sort of distracted with all the goodies in the library, they've been creeping through the villa to get to here. And they all seem a little bit surprised to find you. Like they were hoping, you know, Wakanga's gone to bed. The library won't have anybody in it. Oh, wait. <laughs> There's a bunch of people here. What are we going to do? That's the situation we're in. Everybody roll initiative. Uh, I'll be looking okay, at a, so a 10 for me, Chris. A 10 for Omen. 19. 19 for Viari. 20. 20 for Jim. 13. All right. And these guys. Very good. All right. Uh, so, Jim, uh, you can act first if you want. How many of them are you there? You see four. Four? Yeah. Uh, all right. I'm going to just try to light them up real quick with four magic missiles. Okay. One at each. Boom, cast boom, boom, boom. Yep. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Just so I can make sure that they're all tagged here. Got it. Uh, so, the first one is four damage. Okay. Three damage, okay. five damage, Ooh. and the last one is four damage. Well done. All right, so they all get so, zapped. Yeah, just bing, bing, bing. Uh, and uh, all are surprised. And then uh, Viari, you're immediately after. And you've sort of got this kind of open book in one hand, and you're standing there and kind of surprised that you didn't detect them until now. Yeah, yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed. Uh, so... Uh, now, they're all black clad, knife having, kind of look similar, yep. although they have some distinctive features. Correct. Okay. Then um, I am assuming this library has one of those ladders that goes around on the rail. Sure does. Um, I. And there's like a. It's because the, the, the walls here are sort of rounded, there's a nice curve to the room. Exactly. Mm. I've got to get a running start and jump onto the ladder. Mm hmm. And then use the momentum of that slide <laughs> to get like to like come at them from a weird angle. Okay, excellent. Um, now you have the option based on how they're positioned to actually kind of try to use the ladder to run over one or two of them. Hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would. I would take that. Uh, I would use it as a weapon if that was uh, an option other than just straight up attack. Yeah. Okay. So when you hit this ladder. Um, and it starts to roll, uh, you do build up some momentum because this ladder just glides. It's so oh, well oiled and so, so well, well prepared. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and as it comes racing with all of its weight and your weight on top of it toward these guys, I'm just going to have them make dexterity checks to see if they can get out of the way. That won't stop you from leaping off at them, but I just want to. All right. All right. Uh, you strike two of them. Uh, so roll... Uh, uh, 2d6 points of damage for me twice. Okay. Two, three, and six. All right. Uh, so they get knocked down and away as the ladder creams into them, and they fall to the floor. 
and then uh, it slams into the third one, who also takes the damage. So roll again. But that's where the ladder comes to a stop. Um, I got four there. And if okay. it comes to an abrupt stop, I'll probably try to like yeah. kick off of it so I'm not yeah. just standing on the ladder to get stabbed. Okay. Now, you can, you can leap down on one of the ones that has fallen prone. There are two of them. You can leap down at the one that the ladder just struck, who's still standing. Or you can leap down at the fourth one who was not hit at all. You know... I'll go for the fourth one and okay. maybe just like I'll attack him. And if I get lucky and can bear him to the ground as well, I'll do that. Okay. Uh, go ahead and uh, make your attack. Um, should I assume, because I, I, I've got the dual wielding, should I just make one attack assuming I don't have both my weapons out? Um, no, you can draw your weapon as you spring from the ladder. So you have two of your weapons. Okay. I get... A 21 and a 24. Both of those easily hit. Yowza. Jeez, good rolls. Um, are any of my allies within five feet? Uh, I would say no. You have swung outside yeah. of their okay. area. Then I will... So, Oh, there's 12 points of damage and Oof. seven points of damage. Oof. All right, this one... That last one is bloodied. He is the worst off of the bunch right now. And uh, you kind of take him to ground and kind of land on top of him. Perfect. Only to realize then that it's actually a woman. Um, oh. You sort of pull oh. back a black hood <laughs> covering her head, and you realize, yeah, it's she's a, a woman with a snake's tongue that hisses out at you. Still, <laughs> still strangely appealing. Mm, yes. <laughs> All right, and that's Viari, which takes us to... Strix. I want to. I want to see what happens here. So Omen is Omen is paying close attention. Yes. This round because it's the first time the combat capabilities uh, yeah. of this <laughs> uh, of this so, individual will be yeah. brought to bear. So Strix, just to recap. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Like to just briefly shout, "No fire in the library!" <laughs> <laughs> During my turn. Good call. And uh, so Strix, you can see Viari's on top of one of them. There are two more that fell prone when they were struck by the ladder, and there's one standing at the base of the ladder. Okay, cool. And would there there isn't any way for me to use my careful spell to fireball to not hit the books, right? You could shape the spell to avoid the books. It's a lot of just hitting. as easily as you could shape it to avoid people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I want right. to look really impressive and do lots of big scary magic. All right. So I'm going to use careful spell fireball on top of these guys and shape it around the books expertly. Okay, so the weirdest fucking fireball you've ever seen, Jim, uh, is detonated yeah. among these guys. It doesn't even oh. look like a fireball. It's just more like a curtain with little globs of fire shooting out here and there. It has absolutely no aesthetic uh, elegance also, to it whatsoever. Before I do that, I'm going to get up on on whiskey, my little broom, and and okay. I'll be up and so I'll be up above while I yeah. The ceiling, the roof here is quite high, so you can be you know 15 Perfect. feet up in the air. Okay. Four, and I got to make saving throws. What's your save DC, Strix? 16. Oh, okay. Yeesh. The two pr the two wow. prone ones that got struck by the ladder failed and are both engulfed. The other two, including the one under Viari, are just singed. Cool. Some remarkable dodging for me to be on top. Of yes, <laughs> that's Lana. super. I'm I think actually it was impressed. Twenty nine. <laughs> Twenty nine or half yes. is uh, fourteen. So didn't roll. Twenty nine. Oh my god. Okay, the two on the ground are extremely hurt, like in the last breath of life. And as I cast the fireball, I'm going to like consciously look at Jim and just be like. Like, yeah. like fingers just like pointing at him like look at this it's like rude gesturing just like and the, the one under you uh, Viari also looks badly burned as this plane of fire just poof, crosses through it your magic disgusts me <laughs> all right also it is their it's turn so expertly around the books it's they're all super safe like they're all just still perfectly safe but like but like the settee and like the leatherback chair, like it's just this nonsense sigil of magic you've made around every useful object. <laughs> yes. And there's, yes, there's exactly. A pot, there's a pot of fondue that actually it hits just a little bit to reheat it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. Gentle, <laughs> gentle heat. will swoop down and just stick a little like a finger in it, me, mm, and then swoop back up. <laughs> Perfect. All right. The the snake folk at this point uh, they begin saying in unison, "We are not here to hurt you. We are here to steal Wakanga's lore. Let us." 
take what we want and leave, and you will not be harmed. And each of them is saying that to one of you. Throw so I weird. would like you all to make wisdom saving throws versus their suggestion spells. Oh, oh. Weird. oh. Gross and weird. Oh, yay. How'd you do, Strix? 19. Is that, is okay, that a you, charm? It is a charm. I have advantage against charm. Ooh, 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 ooh. I got a 15. Okay. You know, I I willingly fail this role. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful snake woman, you know, chanted chanted at me. I'm like, I'm like, oh, oh, I realize now she didn't actually attack me or stab. Mm-hmm. I am way out of line. We, I am so sorry. You know, I will I will give her a hand up. Oh, okay. Yeah. You pull her to her feet, badly singed as she is. Uh, How did you end up doing there, Omen? Uh, I th- With your two rolls. I believe that I have a 25. Okay. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. This is what uh, I do. Yes. Uh, so, Omen, Jim, and Strix, you realize that you were just subjected to this charm spell effect, but you shake it off. It has no effect on you whatsoever. Uh, Viari helps his up. And then when she sees that the spells has not the spells have not worked as well on the others, uh, she uses the rest of her action uh, to uh, flee the room, uh, waving at Viari as she oh, leaves. yeah as she leaves. Oh, we'll we'll go see ya. <laughs> hey, I got a big race tomorrow. I don't know yeah. if you want to come to it or. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so uh, that's their turn, which then brings us, of course. To Omen. Mm-hmm. Well, Omen is now angry. Um, he has he has the condition angry, mm-hmm. um, which will be on the, which will be on the new uh, Dungeon Masters screen. And it'll be a picture of Omen inside there, um, just wordlessly. He is just sort of moving along this the same arc that mm-hmm. Viari took. Yeah. Um, basically, just cleaning up the people that were in Viari's <laughs> wake. With, okay. the, with the mall. So it basically gets swung up off of the ground and then brought up. And I'm just going to bring it down on the first one in that in that line. Of course. Make an attack with advantage because he's prone. Because, because he's a prawn. I'm glad I have prawn. advantage because the first one was not good. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's total misery. It's total I'm, misery. What did you roll? Just oh, out of curiosity. so bad. Um, I mean, their armor class is not high. They're not, they're not wearing armor. Oh, so. really? Oh, okay. Uh, is a 14 okay? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, so I, was like, I was like, they're so snaky. Like, I'm way intimidated by these so guys. They're so snaky. <laughs> Do Dude, your they're damage. Snaky. They're snaky for real, Strix. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so they were coming snaky. here to steal, not get into oh, okay. a fight. So. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he gets... He, I bring it straight down on him. It's no good. All right. Uh, let me put together some damage for you. That is 10 points. You kill him. And then, I, I, because I'm a war priest, mm-hmm. I have it... Whenever I use the action, the attack action, I actually can make another uh, attack. Yes, you can. So I'm just going to keep, like I say, I mean, my end, right. my end goal here is to just keep grinding through these people so that I can physically slap Viari, but they're all in the way. They're yes. all in the way there. So now make I go your, to, make your second pair of rolls for the other prone guy. Yep. I go. Yep. Yeah, that's a hit. That's a hit. Okay. And then I'll deliver some more products down there. Uh, that's nine points. You kill him. Yeah. And I there's one more one if you got any more attacks. No, I'm, I'm out of attacks now. Oh, okay. All right, uh, Jim. There is one left standing in the room. And he's hurt. He is very, very hurt. Yeah, everyone already did all the work. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's just just clean up, really. I this is good magic. I'm a good, good, good magic person. I am going to drive all. I'm going to drive four of these magic mm-hmm. missiles right into this guy. Right. Wow, magic missile. That's that's a pretty easy spell. Five, <laughs> eight. 11, 14, 16. Okay, so just bam, 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 bam. These missiles hit him, and every time he's hit, he's knocked back until the last one blasts him right out through a window, <laughs> sending uh, just all this colored glass falling, uh, this stained glass falling around him. And the smoke him. trail spells out Jim. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and he is clearly dead as well. Trish and is like, uh, wow, is that your name? <laughs> And as, as we stand there amid the, the wreckage of these dead uh, uh, snake person corpses, uh, you're all able to catch your breath. Uh, Viari, because your love just walked out the door. Is, uh, did, did, did my new snake girlfriend, uh, did she leave a, 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 like a token of her affection, like a dagger? One of these 
these wavy daggers? Uh, she didn't leave hers, no. Um, oh. But there are there are three wavy daggers lying on the floor now. Oh, I was hoping that she left something for me. Just she she blew you a kiss and then fled. Okay. So I'll take it. All right, uh, we'll pick up this game at <gasps> PAX West on huh? stage at Benaroya Hall. <laughs> Be there. I'm so scared. Be there for dinosaur racing, if nothing else. Yeah, exactly. 